For more than a decade, Saturdays and Illegal Curve have been synonymous with one another. With insight, analysis, and interviews regarding the Winnipeg Jets, the Manitoba Moose, and all around the NHL, here are Dave Manouk, Ezra Ginsberg, and your host, Drew Mendel. The Illegal Curve Hockey Show starts now. Better late than never. Good morning, Winnipeg. Good morning, Manitoba. For all those joining us live this morning on our YouTube channel and all of our social media platforms, we say good morning, universe, and welcome to the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. A great Saturday morning to all alongside Dave Manuk, alongside Ezra Ginsberg. I'm your host, Drew Mandel, here for the next couple of hours to talk about the Winnipeg Jets. Thank you, Mike. I Happy did anniversary already... to Sheldon and Tannis. Yes, I did already send them... Uh, uh, anniversary greetings uh the kids made a little video for them so we've uh Aww. i've checked off that box thank you very much though for the reminder mike you win the contest of reminding drew about his parents anniversary so we and drew just so you know i actually got a phone call from my mom at about 11 30 last night feeling terrible that she hadn't wished me happy birthday uh half birthday sorry on the ides of march so she uh i mean she gets a she gets a, a check mark for watching our show i was gonna Thanks, say did mom. you watch the show well, obviously, I, to, I didn't phone and tell her. She okay. obviously, I, I was waiting for her to see if she watched the show. She called me at eleven thirty. She felt terrible, so it worked. My guilt worked. Dave, there I think go. the half birthday is just as bad as the wave, as far as I'm concerned. Like, what is this? <laughs> well, half I'm with Drew. What is this half birthday? Half talk birthday. to Cheryl, Ezzy. It doesn't exist. Look, it's a kids fake up thing. until the kids up until the age of ten celebrate a half birthday, and then the elderly between the ages of ninety and hundred <laughs> celebrate a half birthday. I don't know how old, however old you are, Dave, but you're 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 not at that age where you can be celebrating half birthdays still. Fair enough. Fair yes, enough. There you yeah. go. Thank you. But now that we've got that off our chest, we'll talk about the hockey the next couple hours here this Saturday morning on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. Big win for the Jets last night. Dominant effort. Uh, in case you missed a lot of our analysis of that, it is available, of course, on our website, uh, IllegalCurve.com, also on the YouTube channel where the replay is immediately there. We start on this Saturday morning, though, with the news, the negative news yesterday coming from the uh, media availability of Rick Bonus in that Gabe Velarde is going to be out of the Jets lineup for an indefinite period of time. He certainly will not play, will not travel on this upcoming five-game road trip. He's out with an enlarged spleen. They discovered this enlarged spleen uh, in the course of examining, I think, the other injury, the real one that we were sort of that he's been working his way back only to find out that he's also dealing with this. So of course, terrible news for Gabe Velarde, terrible news for the Winnipeg Jets. When he's been in the lineup this year, he's been so effective for the team. And now it's a big question mark as to when he's going to come back. If it's going to be, you know, before the playoffs, if it's going to be the season, we're not going to speculate because that wouldn't be fair. We're not medical professionals. Gabe Velarde out of the Jets lineup uh, moving forward. So I ask you guys this, you know, they, they they spent all the capital to get that top six where they wanted it with Tyler Toffoli, and he was great last night. And now a key member of that top six is not going to be in the lineup, you know, for, his, for a chunk of time here. How do the Jets sort of rejig the forward group from your perspective? Is it what they did last night with Alex Iafallo? Is that the go forward plan? Are you on board with that plan? Or would you rather see another tweak beyond Alex Iafallo with Connor and, and Shifley and Ehlers with Toffoli and Monaghan? Right. And, you know, I, I think you raise a good point when you talk about how are the Jets going to deal with this? Because we don't know, as you mentioned, Drew, like, all we know is that Gabe Velarde, as you mentioned, is not going on the road trip. So the Jets mm -hmm. have a five-game road trip out east, starting, obviously, tomorrow against Columbus. So we know he's going to miss five games. He's already missed eight games in a row. So that's going to be 13 games in a row at least. But it really is hard to say, you know, long-term how this is going to affect the Jets because we don't know how long he's going to be out. But in the short term, mm -hmm. you wonder, you know, is, is this, you know, a situation where you roll with Alex Iafallo on the right wing there, on the top line because I don't think that's something that is proven to to it hasn't shown good results and I think I would much rather see Vlad Nemesnikov on the right wing with with Shifley and Connor if you're going to keep Shifley and Connor together and that's why I drew it so interesting because I don't really know right like clearly guys Sean Monaghan and Tyler to fully have chemistry they've played together a little bit before but we've seen that chemistry in I think this is three games now of Tyler to fully three or four I believe it's three right yeah, that was, three it was home, just the home three stand, home right? games. Yeah, yeah, so it's been three games. Obviously, to fully scored his first two goals 
last night, but you can see that chemistry and you're going to also see the chemistry with Ehlers, right? So Ehlers to Foley and Monaghan, I think you have something there. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, you know, Connor and Shifley, I mean, we, we know how many years they've played together. Mm-hmm. So for I think better or worse, <laughs> exactly for better or for worse, even though, you know, the, the data would show that, you know, Shifley and Connor are actually sometimes more effective when they're separated. Correct. You know, who is more effective Ehlers, of course. So you always have the option of, of, flip-flopping and then having Ehlers go up to the top line but I would say to you Drew that that would be my preference I would number one in an ideal world all things being equal with Velarde out of the lineup I like either Vlad Nemestikov or Nino Niederreiter too and I think there's an argument to be made even though Dave the Lowry Appleton Niederreiter line has been so effective Mm -hmm. Drew mentioned now you have you know a more options and you have a little bit more permanence if you want to call it that um, in terms of knowing that Velarde is going to be out for at least these next five games if not more so Mm -hmm. I think if you know I'd like to see Nemestikov back up there and by the way guys I don't think anything is written in stone yes I mean the Jets won six nothing with Alex Iafallo playing on the top line but for me I would much rather see Iafallo in a bottom six third fourth line checking role because I think that's where he's the most effective I don't think that he offers you enough offense uh, to, to be on the first line. That's my own opinion. But if you're going to keep Ehlers to Foley and Monaghan together, that's what I would say. Nemesnikov makes the most sense on that top line. You know, I, I found it interesting, Dave, in his pregame comments yesterday, Rick Bonus, you know, immediately after sort of laying out how the lines were going to start the game, he immediately hedged in saying mm-hmm. that, you know, if Shifley and Connor and Aya Fallow aren't aren't going, he will not hesitate to bump Nikolai Ehlers up there mm-hmm. and, and then rejig that second line. So I thought that was sort of an, an interesting comment. Now, of course, they were going because you're playing against just a, a horrendous hockey team last night. Yeah. And, you know, let's be honest, against the you know the blue jackets on sunday you're not playing against a team that's you know heads and shoulders better than the anaheim ducks it gets sort of later in the road trip or after the the sunday game that yeah. you know the, the the competition level gets a little bit uh steeper so you know i mean i expect the jets will start with that line tomorrow but i found it interesting how rick bonus immediately said i'm not going to be afraid to sort of you know move ears up and switch things around depending on how the the tenor of the game is going yeah, and look, th- these guys have a, a short runway to build some confidence, right? Like you said, Drew, they they played the Ducks, not a good team. They're playing the Blue Jackets, not a good team. So mm-hmm. we'll see if they can build that chemistry, get some good vibes going, and then bring that into the tougher matchups against well, the Capitals aren't a tough, tougher matchup, but the Rangers are a tougher matchup. The Islanders and the Devils are are, are tighter matchups than these two teams. Yeah, so the Devils just went into Dallas and beat the Stars pretty yeah, handily. Uh, yeah. I think on I think that was Thursday night, if I'm not mistaken. Boys, it's like nobody wants to take ownership of that last wild card spot in the East. Like yeah. the Detroit Red Wings are doing everything they can to they lost fall like, out what, of a wild in a row, card spot. Seven in right? a row? Like so, teams like the Islanders. I think the Islanders are now in that wild card spot. They are. They are. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not going to be, it's not an easy road trip by any stretch of the imagination. It's easy from a travel perspective, being out in New York and and the tri-state area. But the truth is that you're going to, like you said, you want to give these guys a little bit of a viewing window and and see what they can do together and if they can develop that chemistry and if they can build on the success they're finding. And sure, it's against the Ducks and you may, you will not have the same opportunities against, you know, like we talked about the Rangers that you did against Anaheim last night. But, but ultimately... You know, you want to be able to see if this team, these guys can build some muscle memory. But but going back to the configuration lines, I'm with Ez. Like, I think, you know, the idea of Vlad Nemestikov is that guy who really, he shouldn't be on the fourth line. He's the guy who, you know, you move Iafalo down, you put Nemestikov up, and that really gives you a top six that, you know, first of all, Nemestikov is, he seems like a bomb. You know, who told you to put the bomb on? But Nemestikov is kind of that bomb for like. The ALM bomb. Well, he's also got a shot that's a bomb, but no. Well, but you're but yes. saying that like, yes. I just want to make sure for the audience that that's what you're saying is that he's yes. a B-A-L. Like he's, he's soothing. He's soothing and he's and he's and he and he rectifies problems. Thank you, Webster's Miriam Webster's dictionary. That is exactly what I meant. And so the fact is, or Ur- Urban Dictionary, I guess, uh, as if we were going with some of the uh, the the Shifleism from yesterday. But look, it comes down to the fact that I think he just brings a little more offense, and that is what you need in your top six. He's also probably just again, he's more. I, I mean, I understand what IFL's role is there to dig out the pucks, to be hard on the forecheck, but I just think you can he- get that with Nemestikov. I mean, we know that he's dealing with a with a sore thumb, and of course, he blocked the shot in the game against um, Nashville, mm-hmm. so he didn't skate on Thursday, but he played obviously in the game on Friday. 
but I, I just think he brings a little more offense and which is what you need in that, in that top six. So if you have Namastikov with Shifley and Connor and you have um, Monaghan, Ehlers and Toffoli, that's a really good top six to me. And again, once you have Velarde back, whenever that is, I mean, that just, again, it's the idea of, you know, Rick Bonus himself said it. Vlad Nemesnikov can go anywhere, right? He started as, he was, when uh, Shifley was unavailable, he was your first line center boys, right? Yeah. So I just think he brings more offense and you need to be, you need the scoring, right? You, you can get scoring from third line and get scoring from the first line and you need scoring from the second line. So I think if all three of those things are happening, you'll get it more effectively with Vlad Nemesnikov there. Andrew, can I just say one thing here? And the other element of this is I, I and I think you guys see this because it's quite obvious what the other option on the right wing at the top line is it's Toffoli right because can you imagine guys mm -hmm. if the Jets didn't acquire Tyler Toffoli mm -hmm. right and like so let's thin. say that the Jets you know their options were only Ayafalo and Nemestikov in your top six and then maybe obviously a guy like Nino Niederreiter could play in your top six right but mm -hmm. that Toffoli acquisition because that like like Drew mentioned this is something that the Jets did not know about to the best of my knowledge until either Thursday or Friday, right, Dave? Like, this is something that's just developed in the last 48 hours. Yeah. Like Drew mentioned, Rick Bonus mentioned uh, to the assembled media that this injury, the, the the enlarged spleen, had nothing to do with the original injury, right? So yeah. at the trade deadline, the Jets did not know that Gabe Velarde had an enlarged spleen. So that Toffoli no. acquisition, to me, is really going to pay off now because you have the option to go Connor Shifley to Foley on the top line. Obviously, you have the option to go Connor Shifley Ehlers, and so that so there are options here, guys. Like Gabe Velarde's injury, I don't think is going to lead to the Jets, you know, losing five games in a row here. Um, so they have options, but I, I definitely don't think, you know, if Velarde is out longer than five games, Drew, or even only five games, I don't think Alex Iafalo is the guy that you necessarily want playing on that top line. I think you have better options either to Foley, Nemesnikov, or I would say Niederreiter. I mean, it's worth noting, I think, that, you know, when the Mesnikov played with Nikolai Ehlers, you know, earlier this year, they had a, a you know, a fair, a great deal of, of chemistry together. They played well together. So to Ezzy's point, Dave, if, if you move to Foley up, you know, and then you slide the Mesnikov up sure. to play on the right wing with, the, you know, Ehlers and Monaghan, well, there is some muscle memory over yep. there. It's not like these guys are completely foreign to, to one another in terms of their style on the ice. I mean, the, the, the Jets are in a, a position, of course, where they now you know, can do some mixing and matching and experimenting. And that's, of mm -hmm. course, uh, a, a huge difference from, say, last year at this time where they couldn't win a game if their lives depended on it. And it went all the way down to game, you know, 82, basically, to, to make the playoffs. 81, I guess, is what it really was in hindsight. But, um, you know, so now you're in the position where you do have the ability to, to shuffle th things around and see what clicks. But, yeah. you know, the Jets, I agree, though, I, you know, Last night, Ayafalo could, you know, worked well. You know, I think he'll probably work well on Sunday against Columbus. But long term, he doesn't. That's not the position I think that he's best suited for. And I think the Jets themselves probably know that as well. Yeah, and I think you're. What, we saw it. They brought four guys in. Obviously, Mark Sheffley doesn't really qualify as one of those four guys. He does, but he doesn't. Right? We knew he was going to come in. He's obviously always going to play when he can. But I mean, you you just saw it in the idea of just keeping guys fresh to that idea, Drew, and, and that idea of keeping the lineup, you know, uh, like a churn. And and so, you know, we'll see what happens Sunday and whether they just keep this for another, two, you know, this this configuration because it worked well versus getting those other guys back in or, or if they bring Perfetti back in and, you know, maybe drop Stanley out. I mean, I can't imagine they're going to sit Sandberg for any length of po uh, time, as he right? Because, you know, you want to give these guys some... Unless he's sick, like unless he's dealing with... And, and that's sure. why I was confused with both of those guys being out, I could understand, like I said, Colin Miller, because, okay, he's the new guy, you know, he's on the third pair or whatever. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I would expect Sandberg to go back into the lineup for Stanley, Dave. Yeah, me too. Me too. So I, I think you get him back in and then like, we'll, we'll see. I mean, ultimately it, I think the, the greater point or the point of the points I think that you can take away from this is the acquisition of Tyler Toffoli has significantly insulated the jets from what they would be if there wasn't, if they hadn't made a big acquisition, right? If they just kind of augmented things, maybe got a depth guy, you know, you'd be in a little more trouble. Right now, they have some latitude. Now, of course, ultimately, this all comes back to just wanting the best for Gabriel Velarde and hoping that, you know, he's healthy. Exactly. And, 
you know, that's, mm-hmm. it, you know, his long-term health is more important than what he can do on the hockey uh, rink, but or at the well, rink. they're going to need him guys for the playoffs, right? Like, and, and again, that would be, it's devastating that he's injured period that he has yeah. the enlarged spleen, but if he's not able to play in the first round, yeah. I mean, that just takes away one of your best offensive players. We talked about it. I mean, there was a period there where, I mean, he, he was just dominant on the power play. Like Velarde right. was, was, you know, he was a threat to pass. He was a threat beside the net to yeah. bring the puck in front and he's got a good shot. Like Velarde's an excellent player. So as you mentioned, Dave, we wish him the best. And, you know, there, whether the Jets play the Avalanche, the Stars or the Predators, or the Golden Knights, Kings, whoever, uh, you're going to need Velarde, right? Mm-hmm. So, it, you know, it. I think, you know, there's a good debate going in the chat about Iofalo. Iofalo is a great player. I mean, the fact that the Jets have this many guys that can move from the fourth or third line up to the first line shows you how good their depth is. I think what we're talking about is, you know, when you're playing some of the better teams, like the Islanders, who are in a playoff spot, the Devils are only four points back, and I've conceded the Devils probably aren't making the playoffs, but the point is, the Jets are playing teams that are either in a playoff spot or close to a playoff spot. Don't Mm -hmm. get me wrong, the Capitals are not a very good team. I'm not afraid of the Capitals. I think the Jets can beat the Capitals fine. All Mm -hmm. I'm saying is, this is a five-game road trip, and as I mentioned last night, I think considering that Velarde's out and just considering that, you know, five games on the road, I think if you're able to get, you know, put up a record of three, one, and one, and that's a pretty solid record, even though you're obviously going to try to win all five games, guys. But um, it's not it's not the easiest road trip. You're playing some good teams. Yeah, look, you're, you're, you have to still match the other team's efforts and everything else. Again, they played great last night against Anaheim, but if they had played a B-plus game against Anaheim, they're still going to win that game. I mean, that, that's yeah. a huge disparity. I mean, if it's, it's wild, you know, doing some research uh, this morning. Uh, yes, look at me, fancy boy, doing some research. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> amazing how much worse the bottom of the West is compared to the bottom of the East. I mean, San Jose, Chicago, Anaheim, you know, 39 points, 41 points, 49 points. Columbus, who's in dead last in the East, at least they still have 55 points. Sure. I mean, they're not a good team. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that they're The West is for sure more top heavy. I agree with you 100%. Well, and, and, and bottom week i mean the, the yeah. you know the east and you know columbus is at least a they're a bad nhl team but at least they're an nhl team you know and admittedly they did sell off two pieces at the trade deadline in andrew peak and jack roslovic so they're going to be even further reduced from where they've been for the majority of the year but you look at the bottom of the west i mean the bottom of the west isn't even an nhl caliber uh you know last night at the anaheim ducks and again we we've talked about it ad nauseum on the post game show already the anaheim ducks you know with the number of of, of players who were out of their lineup they were an AHL caliber team on the ice last night, with the exception of just a few guys who 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 have that talent. The Jets do need to still play a you know a, a quality game on uh, uh, on on Sunday to get against the Columbus Blue Jackets. You remember last year they went into Columbus and they and they lost to the Blue Jackets you know on that road trip. It was a game the Jets played pretty well in, but mm-hmm. they did lose you know as part of the you know end of the Jets slide. lost at home to Columbus. Remember Patrick Line had two goals. Yeah. I remember I was year. at that game yeah. uh, I think I went with my sister if I'm not mistaken. I was a, a I'm a surprised fan. you can remember it if you were there as a fan. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> you know the last the, the last few games I've gone to as a fan the Jets have lost. I remember I went to that Dallas game in November. I think that was 2-0. Yeah. If I'm mm-hmm. not mistaken they were shut out so yeah, I mean, look, uh, Columbus has enough talented players. Just like, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of teams in that mushy middle. Like, Columbus obviously is not making the playoffs. Right. Um, but, you know, they're they're still going to fight hard for Pascal Vincent. And, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, the, the Blue Jackets haven't done better in Pascal's first year as an NHL head coach. Um, but, I mean, the Patrick Laine situation, uh, injury, and then obviously him going into the player assistance program, I mean, that that kind of, for me, sealed their fate. Um, if well, you have line A in your lineup, think, then then I think you you have a little bit of a chance. But that's your best goal scorer out of the lineup for a long period of time, right? Yeah, I think their their season was over uh, as soon as uh, Mike Babcock asked, asked to look at uh, other players' phones, which is still remarkable that he learned absolutely nothing in the course of his banishment from the NHL. But in, my, in in all fairness, you did that when you hired me for illegal <laughs> curve, Drew. So you looked at my phone, and all you saw was pictures of. Like different, Food. you saw like beer bottles, yeah, That's burgers, right. beer bottles, whiskey, yeah, pizza. 
Cupcakes. The one, the one shirtless photo still scars me to this day, though. You know, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I was going to make the joke. You've been playing on the show with an enlarged heart for years. Why can't uh, Velarde play with an enlarged yep. spleen? But I'm got a little being, baboon heart. There you go. I, we do wish Gabe Velarde, of course, the best in, in, in a healthy return. And there is no timeline. And that's you know sort of where yep. the Winnipeg Jets have to sort of go through that mindset that if slash this is an when... interesting comment. Sorry, a Andrew Haleko, mm -hmm. aka Centro Tech T CEO, is uh, a medical doctor. So, I mean, Andrew would know here, he says, enlarged spleen is usually due to an underlying issue like infection. Velarde will be okay if they can treat the cause. So, uh, Dr. Haleko knows a lot more than us. So, I mean, that's just something I thought I would put up there that, I mean, we, we don't know at this point. Velarde could be back, you know, two or three weeks from now. So, I just thought that was interesting. Dr. Haleko knows what he's talking about. Yeah, that goes down to exactly what you're saying, though. They just got to treat that, and then you have to, you know, get him hopefully back into, you know, game condition, and you know, when things of that nature, you know, however long it takes, it's going to take, and the Jets will just have to pivot and react accordingly uh, yeah. when they're when they're facing a situation uh, uh, of this unique uh, approach. But that's why the depth that the Jets have, you know, makes this so much more tolerable and so much more, uh, you know manageable than in past years because in past years you're plucking i mean they wouldn't be at this point in time because of the trades past the trade deadline but you remember they're plucking guys in off of the roster off of the street lee stempniak. They're dropping them. lee stempniak or uh what was the guy uh the winnipeg kid that ponikarovsky. say it again well i was gonna say alexi ponikarovsky well, not even cody that. Of a devil's trade cody eakin Oh, uh, there was Cody Eakin. There was another kid um, that they plucked off of. Uh, I think they got Eric him off of waivers from Seattle a couple of years ago during the really. Oh, you're, uh, talking, about you're talking about what's his name? Uh, James Wright. Coolman. Carson Coolman. Carson Coolman, I think, yeah. yeah. They pluck him off the uh, off waivers. And well, Adam year. Brooks is who I was talking about. That's oh, what I was yes. About. Adam Brooks. All of a sudden, he, Adam from, Brooks he came from Toronto, liner. though. Yeah, he came from Toronto. You're right. Sorry, yeah. I got the, my, my cities wrong. The depth of the Jets is what obviously makes this way more of a manageable situation and their position in, you know, where they are in the in the playoff race that the Velarde injury, well, certainly not desirable and certainly not what you wanted. They're going to be able to manage it and, and get through it. And then they hope that he to get him back, obviously, before the start of the playoffs. But whenever it is, they just sort of begin to you're you're in a better position to roll with the punches. Well, uh, I mean, just and Drew, just to add that quick. I mean, the idea is, and I think I saw the comment in the chat. You always have to deal with injuries that happens. Yes. So I mean, like you know, being able to see how your team reacts and adjust accordingly is important. And obviously, you don't want to have to deal with it at all. But better that you deal with it now and learn to see what guys can play with each other. Mm -hmm. So then, if, when if and when you get Gabriel Velarde back, if something happens again to him or somebody else. Your team doesn't have to go into that sort of like panic mode of let's see if something can work. Yes. Uh, injuries on March 16th are way more palatable than injuries on April 16th, as the Jets found out last year in that first round playoff matchup against the Golden Knights. And, you know, and even in the bubble year with Shifley going down as early as he did, uh, you know, against the Calgary Flames. So, you know, you don't want injuries, but you certainly don't want injuries come playoff time. OK, Jay, we're going to go to break well, so you can go get your coffee. Everybody fuel up. Also, Cam Cam's been Cam's been in the green room for a couple of minutes here. Cam's I know, ready Cam to go. Cam Poitras of CJOB Jets at Noon is up next Saturday morning. It's the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. We're live on all of our platforms. Keeping Winnipeg laughing for over 30 years. Rumors, Canada's longest running comedy club, bringing you the biggest laughs from the best comedians on the planet. Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, John Stewart, Dennis Miller, Brad Garrett, the greats, and all the up-and-comers too. When was the last time you laughed out loud? Make it a great night out with friends or book your office or birthday party. Even a fundraising event at Rumors. Get all the details and dates on upcoming shows at rumorscomedyclub.com. Whoa, Ezzy, everything okay? You look stressed. Of course I'm stressed. We're moving, the house is upside down, the kids failed miserably at packing the fine china, and my life is in chaos. Chaos! Yes, that does sound like a problem. What am I going to do? Ezzy, relax. Rolly's transfer moving and storage is the answer. With 60 years of experience in moving Manitobans and a track record of exemplary customer service, one call to Rolly's and your stress is gone. No job is too big or too small. Just visit rollies.com and they will take it from there. Thanks, Dave. And thank you, Rollies Transfer Moving and Storage, online at rollies.com. Hey, Drew. 
Ezzy, whoa, what a smile. Yeah, I got my crowns done at Linden Market Dental Center, and they whiten my teeth. I see. They're so bright that every time I smile, they go... We have hockey tonight. Do you have a mouth guard to protect those pearly whites? I sure do. Whoa, they even ting through the mouth guard. Linden Market Dental Center covers all your dental needs, from restorative to cosmetic dentistry, and will fit you with a sports guard for that active lifestyle. 877 Waverly. See LindenMarketDental.com. Boston Pizza harnessed analytics to test if the game is better at home or at Boston Pizza. The results are irrefutable. Catch the game at Boston Pizza, powered by Fanalytics. We did it again. You're on fire, man. There's power in a handshake. After a great game or great deal, it shows professionalism and respect. Two qualities Zapia Group Realty take pride in. You don't build a business where 95% of your clients are referred by others without honesty, integrity, and total dedication to client satisfaction. To sell your home for more in less time, shake hands with Frank and Mauro Zappia of Zappia Group Realty. Get started at zappiagroup.com. We are back. Hour number one of the Illegal Curve Hockey Show rolls on on this Saturday morning. Drew Mandel, Dave Manuk, Ezra Ginsburg talking about the Winnipeg Jets. Reminder, post-game show tomorrow, Sunday, right around 7.30 p.m. Central Time. So a bit of a unique start time with the 5 o'clock puck drop uh, here in the I Central I like the 5 o'clock zone. puck drop. I'm going well, to ask Cam about that, but I think that's a, a dandy time to have a hockey game. Okay, well, there you go. Ezzy is going to give us his insight into well, better the time than the game should be morning, scheduled like at. Weeks ago, Drew. Yeah, that's true. Anything's better than the early morning game that we had. Let's welcome to the program Cam Poitras from there Jeff's Noon on CJOB. Cam, good morning. How are you? Good morning, guys. I'm doing good. How are that's you? Good. I'm well. Looks like I got a bit of an interloper with a balloon here, so we'll have to... Uh, <laughs> Sam, say hi to everybody. Hi, Sam. Hello, hello. There you go, buddy. Thanks for coming with the balloon. Oh. Sam, make sure that your dad doesn't pop that balloon. Oh, I, I won't. Don't worry. The balloon, he likes that balloon more than he likes me, I think. That's not true, Dad. Oh, that's not true? Good. Thank you. Uh, oh, that's nice to know. Yeah. No, we got lots of likes, buddy. <laughs> it, 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 makes, it makes no sense, Cam. I mean, both of Ki Drew's kids are great, good looking, right? Like, so it's a, it's a real mystery. Uh, no comment. No comment. <laughs> I, I could make a comment, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reserve it because Sam's right there. Thank you for making the comment, Dave, or avoiding making the comment. And by the there way, Cam, he goes. Drew just walked Mike because he just asked his son if he could keep the balloon, and Sam said, <laughs> <laughs> said I'm going to go play with the balloon, and Sam's going to stay and do the show instead. Uh, anyways, uh, there's a walk-on cameo here on the program this morning. Uh, Cam, obviously, uh, we had uh, you were there. You were listening to the conversation backstage we were having about Gabe Velarde. You know, your thoughts yeah. on the significance of the injury and how the Jets are going to... Uh, you know, manage the the absence of such an important player. Yeah, it's it's a hundred percent disappointing. I mean, I we he's on pace right now. I I, I crunched the numbers about seventy five points, thirty five goals. If he would play eighty two games in a season, so I mean that's a huge loss to this team, especially like it seems the power play is so different when he's on there and, and you know him and around the net with his with his stick handling and he's got some of the nicest mitts in the entire league, so it's it's a huge blow there. Um, and they're trying to gain. They haven't like the, the top line with Shifley, Connor, and Velarde. The Jets have been really trying to get those three guys together. What it seems like for the whole season and maybe ten games they played together the the entire time. So. It's definitely disappointing. I feel for him. Um, he's, I mean, in coming into next season and it's going to be for the rest. We don't know when he's going to come back. You know, is it going to be a week, two weeks? Uh, the playoffs, uh, the second round being um, hopefully uh, confidently into the second round. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens there. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel for him. None of these injuries. I mean, it seems like he's over that back issue. Uh, and of course, the, 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 sp the sprained MCL uh the now this it, it the the core I, I i have to go his upper body injury beforehand i have to assume it was a core a problem uh, somewhere like uh in, in, in a core injury there uh, we don't know for sure uh but it seems like none of these things are connected and it's just he's on a string of bad luck which is bad luck for the team as well so cam as you mentioned we don't know how long velarde is going to be out so assuming he's only out five games or you know seven games whatever it is yeah. I mean, what do you expect to see out of the, the top six? Because I know you and Jim talk about it all the time 
on on Jets at noon. I mean, Nikolai Ehlers, is there a guy that's more polarizing? Maybe Kyle Connor would be yeah. in that conversation as well. But I think you always have the option of reuniting Shifley, Ehlers, and Connor. But for me, like I, I'm expecting to possibly see Tyler Toffoli on that top line, you know, as early as maybe you know tomorrow versus Columbus. Maybe we'll see it later in the road trip. And then as a second part of the question. What have you thought of Toffoli in the first three games as a Jet? Obviously, he scored two goals last night, but what has kind of stood out to you about Toffoli? Is it just more of what we've seen throughout his career, just a, a good hockey player who you know you know has a has the ability to score a lot of goals? Yeah, I, I think I think Monahan and Toffoli are going to be fairly attached at the hip. I don't think that the Jets, if something is is going wrong, they they would hesitate to move him up. I, and I I think that will happen at at some point over the course of the final 16 games, I think we will see Toffoli up on that line. I don't think the Jets are going to be in a big rush to do it, though. I think they want to see Ehlers, Monaghan, and Toffoli together. I think that was the big reason why they brought him in. Uh, for whatever reason, um, Rick Bonus does not like Ehlers uh, on the right side. He doesn't want him on the right side. He thinks he's better on the left side, and that's where he wants to stick him. So, And, and he said it leading, going into the game yesterday, um, that if it wasn't working, Ehlers would go right back up there. But they just want to give this time. Of course, they beat six nothing. They pounded uh, the Ducks yesterday. Uh, you know, bonus kept saying a tired team. I agree with that, but it was still a six nothing victory, um, and there really wasn't too many chances outside of a couple in the second period there um, uh, around the power play for the Ducks. So I, I I think Toffoli has fit in well. He was a perfect fit. Like he's like that that like prototypical perfect guy that you get at the deadline because. His style of play is so um, – it's so easy to integrate it with, right? It's just get in front of the net, north-south, bam. You know, it's going to take him a game or two to get used to playing with the new players. I mean, luckily, he's got a bunch of guys that he has – He's you know, he knows very well. A bunch of guys he has a lot of chemistry with. I mean, Sean Monaghan with his time back in the, with the 67s in the OHL. Um, you know, I follow. I don't think they played too much together, but they obviously good friends in LA. So Toffoli's been a great, uh, a, a great asset. He's a perfect pickup at a deadline, and uh, the fans uh, sure love him already. I mean, it was it was kind of like Nino Niederreiter when he got into that fight um, last year at the deadline. Uh, <laughs> Jets fans love uh, deadline additions. What can I say? Cam, I have to ask you about a guy who's definitely not a deadline addition, but he's having just you mentioned great players, Josh Morrissey. And what we're seeing from him over this last little stretch. I mean, he's always been a phenomenal player, but it didn't look like he was going to be able to match last year's totals. And yeah. right now he is on pace to at least hit from an assist perspective, close to 60 uh, for the second consecutive year. So what are you seeing from him? And, and actually yesterday when I was looking at it, I think find it all the more remarkable given that he's got half as many playoff points, uh, playoff power play points as he did last year. Last year he had 28 in his, in his, uh, whatever it was, I think 76. And yeah. right now he's only got 14. So, I mean, he's doing this without the man advantage uh, benefit. He's doing it all at five on five. Well, it's disappointing when you say that because <laughs> if the power play was half good for half the year, he would be at that pace. Um, and they, they couldn't figure it out. Uh, he, it's his hot, it's his hockey IQ guys. It's, it's him knowing when to pinch, when to, when to make the play, when to pass the puck. Um, he he's he's getting better. He he's getting better. I mean, he's on the best stretch of his entire of his entire year. Uh, three assists last night, and he he's he's just been so absolutely fantastic. I mean, I remember. I think it was last year when, when we were on. We were talking, uh, or it was the year before when we were talking about the Jets in need of sort of that number one defenseman. Well, they had one. They just needed to wait for him to get going, uh, and so. Uh, it's there, there's still growth. Like he's sort of the exception. I, we were talking to um, uh, Scott Wheeler on the athletic uh, who's the top uh, prospects um, analyst uh, with the athletic. And anyways, he was on the show and he kind of says most players plateau around 22, 23, 24. And then you know exactly uh, who they are after that point. Well, it, it was a little bit of a late uh, bloomer for Josh Morrissey. It wasn't that long ago during the uh, the Vegas and the C and the Seattle availability. People were saying, "Why don't we leave? Oh, you leave Josh Morrissey open and stuff like that." But uh, he's 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 the best defenseman on the team. He might be their uh, their best player next to Connor Hellebuck and, and Mark Shifley. He's just it's his hockey IQ, guys. That's what that's what takes him over the top. Absolutely. And is he not uh, a, a serious candidate to play for Team Canada at the Olympics in 2026? I think he is. He should be. He 100% he should be. Um, he should be on that team. Uh, absolutely. 
Cam Poitras, our guest Saturday morning, the Illegal Curve Hockey Show rolls on. Cam, of course, is the host of Jets at Noon on CJOB. Uh, Cam, you know, with the additions and with the Jets being in the salary cap position that they're in, they have an enlarged roster. Uh, and, and as a result, you know, you, we've seen Rick Bonus sort of shuffling some guys in and out of the lineup. We saw it last night where Nate Schmidt and Logan Stanley came in and uh, uh, Dylan Sandberg and Colin Miller went out. What do you think about the coach and, and his ability or his, uh, his, his decision to sort of rotate guys and keep guys fresh and make sure nobody's sitting for too long as they have this, uh, larger than normal roster uh, moving forward well yeah 16 games uh 16 games left and there's very likely going to be injuries at some point over these final 16 games as the season ramps up you don't want a guy that's going to be sitting in the press box for two months that hasn't come in into an nhl game so i'm i'm totally 100 on board with that i think it's i think it's a good move uh you know to to keep uh, nate schmidt in to keep give logan stanley some more time especially the forwards as well uh you know cole perfetti is kind of finding himself uh on the way out i mean you, you know we talk about um i Fallo in the top six he isn't a top six forward i, I think everybody agrees with there uh, agrees with us there but um uh it, it's kind of you know cole perfetti is kind of He's, he's on the way out. I mean, two months ago, three months ago, we never would have thought he would have been a healthy scratch, but he's just in, he's in such, I, he's in trouble right now. Like guys, he's, he's in trouble. He's thinking too much. He's overreading the game. He's costing the Jets goals. I mean, he was on that second goal against Nashville in the first period. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was a blown play by four of the guys on the ice. Him and yeah. Sandberg went to the same guy. Uh, I think it was Colin Miller and uh, Morgan Barron. They went to the same guy in front of the net here. And, and but it was it was it was a line there. I don't want to. There was a completely blown play. But that's what's going on with Cole Perfetti. He's out there. He's costing the Jets too much. So him being a healthy scratch, I, I think it's it's a good thing um, right now for the team because I mean, if he was going where he was supposed to be right now, I don't think they. I think they would have still been looking at it, bringing in a guy like Tyler Toffoli. But it wouldn't have made it such a necessity. Uh, so David Gustafson finding his way into the lineup and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's about ma making sure uh, that when an injury happens, there isn't a guy sitting up in the press box. So it's a good move by the coach. You know, Cam, just getting away from the Jets here for a second, going back to that game against the Nashville Predators, which you yeah. obviously referenced. Um, we know the Predators are on a 13-game point streak. And obviously right now, if the playoffs started based on Drew mentioned this, the Jets would, based on points percentage, they would have first place in the Central, so it would be the Jets and Predators. We should mention that the Jets do play the Predators. I think it's the fourth last game of the season, yeah. uh, the last couple weeks of the season. But how impressed were you with, with the Predators? Because I, I'll be honest, I have not watched the Predators a lot this year, and I realized they were kind of like both a buyer and a seller uh, at the trade deadline. But the way Philip Forsberg played, the way Roman Yossi played, Obviously, UC Soros, you'd agree, is a top five goalie in the NHL all day Without long. Doubt. Or at the very doubt. least, uh, a top 10. But I would say top five. But, I mean, it was starting to look like, you know, you wanted to avoid either Colorado or Dallas in the first round, which I'm in complete agreement with. You definitely want to finish first, get home ice, and then play the bottom seed in, in the West if you can. Yeah. But it seems like, you know, that jets Predators series, if they ended up playing in the first round, um, you know, that's not going to be an easy out. The Predators, I think, have shown us that, you know, they're 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 just they're more than just a pretty good hockey team. Well, I'm 100 percent with you on that. I mean, it's there's there's still remnants of 2018 between the Jets and the Predators. When they play, it's still a game of note. I still remember it. I think most Jets fans still remember it. So when they go up against the Predators and they lose, uh, it stings just a little bit more than I think most other teams. I think people can. Uh, maybe if they would lose a game to the Colorado Avalanche, I think it it affects the fan base a little bit, um, a little bit less than it does against a, a loss with the Nashville yeah. Predators. They were apoplectic uh, on 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 Wednesday night. <laughs> that's right. Um, I I I hesitate. Be careful who you wish for. And I talk about the Bombers. Everybody was pretty happy that the Alouettes uh, beat uh, Toronto in the East final, right? Yeah. Um, and then you end up going to the great cup and you lose and you lose to that team. And, you know, who knows, it maybe would have been a blowout if the Argonauts were there, they kind of shot themselves in the foot in that East final game. But, um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want to play the predators right now. I mean, it's still 16 games left or how many games left for them 16 for the jets. A lot of things could, could change over that, over that period of time. 
but this is a team that's dialed in. They've dug themselves into uh, – and listen, th- these guys are they, – they're missing a lot of cap, salary cap space. Next year it's going to get worse um, with, with Matthew Shane, uh, with, with Ryan Johansson. Um, I, th- I, th- I think they're still paying Kyle Turris too as well. <laughs> uh, cap friendly. Um, but uh, so I, I'm, I'm really impressed. It was, they, they took away that U2 game from them said, no, you guys yeah. got to be held accountable. Uh, you're not going to go see U2, which I think is like a classic uh, dad mom move uh, on the team. But if for some reason it worked uh, and, and they're playing exactly the way that they need to play They're do- This is, it's, it's a perfect example of, you don't need to have the most talented roster to have if, as, as long as everybody is pulling on the rope, um, you know, you could, you could have, like, if you're playing tug of war, you could have, you know, 12, you know, 300 pound muscle guys. But if, if they don't know what they're doing, they're not working together. Uh, you know, they could get beat by, by, by lesser guys. And that's what's going on right now with the, with the national predators. I, I, I think they're, I think they're, they're outstanding. Um, I wouldn't want to play them in the, in, in the first round, but I wouldn't want to play Colorado and I wouldn't want to play Dallas. So it's going to be up to the jets to, to win those series. Well, that's why Cam, we were talking about how, how good you have how good it is at the top of the western conference right like you have yeah. a team like the vegas golden knights who nobody expected to be scratching and clawing for their playoff lives and then you have teams like chicago anaheim san jose but in contrast i mean you have some pretty good team you're going to have a lot of good teams in the east that don't make it right like the devils the capitals the penguins uh, I mean, the Detroit Red Wings, look, it seemed like they were a lock to make the playoffs, look, the, the, and now they're but, tied for that last wild card spot. Yeah. Yeah, there's no question that the wild card teams in the West are a lot better than the wild card teams in yes. the East. I mean, I think yeah. that's, that's evident and, and, and clear to everybody because, you know, that's just, you know, I think the, the, the eye test and the number and the, and the number test will tell you that uh, for sure. Cam Poitras, our guest on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show Saturday morning. You know Cam, of course, is the host of Jets at Noon on CJOB. Uh, to your point, Cam, the uh, Predators are still paying and Kyle Turris two million dollars a season <laughs> in terms of a buyout for the next four years after this one. So I couldn't uh, next believe year that. they'll have. Uh, over seven and a half million dollars in dead cap space with uh, Duchesne and Kyle Turris. So uh, yes, to your point about uh, their salary cap struggles, that's uh, very apt. Yeah, yeah, no, and uh, they're they're in a very similar situation uh, as the Minnesota Wild are still mm-hmm. going to be for the next little bit here. So um, yeah, I mean buyouts, 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 buyouts. I mean this is why you don't. That's why there's lots of conversation. Oh, we need to buy out Nate Schmidt in the offseason and stuff like that. No, no, no. You don't want to. You don't want to go down that road. Uh, if you can trade a pick or something, and I, I, I uh, you know, you don't want to have a guy that you're paying over seven million dollars in the press box um, that that might even drop. Uh, further down the depth chart next year with Villa Hainel is going to come into camp and win a spot again. Elias Solomonson, everybody seems to be excited about him. Uh, he's an absolute stud. And I think he, he might be in the NHL a lot earlier than some people think he is depending, especially how uh, things happen on the right side uh, for this team. He might find himself. I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if somewhere next season, I, he's going to start with the moose. I'm, I'm almost convinced of that. Um, but uh, he might find his way onto the lineup at some point uh, uh, over the course of the season next year. So, um, no, I no no more buyouts. I mean, you, you're you're still paying Blake Wheeler for another year. That's my opinion on that, anyways. But you no, know, Yesterday, the Jets picked up their 42nd win in Game 66. The last year, it took them till Game 76 to get 42 wins, and mm-hmm. we're seeing. And I think part of the big reason for that, and this isn't rocket science, because I was looking at the numbers, David Riddich last year. Nine eight and one, a nine oh one save percentage, a two point six seven goals against average. This year, Laurent Bressois, twelve four and two, nine twenty seven save percentage, a one point nine nine goals against average. He is back to back shutouts. Can you are there enough superlatives to talk about Laurent Bressois and what he's been able to do? And it doesn't it looks like in terms of games played, he probably will end up playing somewhere in that, you know, yeah, uh, twenty 25 20 to 23 range maybe but what can you say about what Lauren Brassois is bringing to this team this year uh well I'll say this if David Riddich was the or Riddick was the um goaltender for this team they would have about five less wins at least five or six <laughs> less less wins and they would probably be in a very very similar situation as sometimes save year. Dave right Cam the irony is that Riddick's having a great year in in LA. Yes. I I know that, but I there know, was I fully agree there, with you. <laughs> there was the one play where he was standing up on a wraparound, yeah. and I, I don't remember the game, but I remember it vividly. Him st- literally standing up, and the other team did a wraparound and scored. And I went, "Okay, Dave, all right." So you're, you're not doing his be on best Ken Dryden game. imitation, right, Cam? <laughs> yes, exactly <laughs> like that. Um, 
uh, Laurent Brossois, I'll say, uh, Dave, I'll say this. Laurent Brossois is not going to be with the Winnipeg Jets next year. He's going to find himself a starting role. That's what he's looking for. That's why he came to this team. He knew how well he worked with, right. with, with Wade Flaherty. I, he knew mm -hmm. how well he worked in tandem with Connor Hellebuck. Him and Hellebuck are like, like look how happy Hellebuck was um, congratulating Laurent Brossois last night on that win. I mean, these guys are real tight. Um, and it's like, it's like you and Jim after jets at noon every day, Cam. <laughs> well, exactly. It's, yeah, exactly. Except, you know, there's, there's a lot less cuss words being thrown at each other, I think, but, uh, <laughs> uh, uh it, it's, he, he's, he's outstanding. I mean, he's been absolutely awesome. He's brought stability to the backup role, which has been so important and it's given Connor Hellebuck a chance to take a step back. I think he, we need to see perhaps more of him over the next little bit. He certainly earned that. And I know Hellebuck is a guy that wants says he wants to play every single ga every single game. I'm not sure it's the best for him. He's he's down a little bit over the last um, couple of games. He's going to find his way back up, uh, and listen, he's going to be ready for the postseason. And a good Laurent Brossois is 100 percent going to help Hellebuck be ready for the playoffs. Absolutely about the, no question about that. I mean, you know, how uh, Brassois numbers and we're, you know, a 927 save percentage and a 199 goals against average. That's tops in the NHL. Hey, did you just goals. mention that? I was like, sure, I'm like, those sure sound familiar. Oh, wait, I just I said those numbers. I know, but those are, I mean, it's tops among the in the NHL among goalies who've played 15 or more games. Cam, it's, did yeah. you know that Lauren Brassois has a 1.99 goals against average? <laughs> I, I didn't hear. No, I wasn't sure. I, uh, I hadn't, I hadn't heard that. Okay, thank you both of you. I'm just I can't get over it. The superlative numbers is what I'm is what I'm so amazed about is that even in the Jets' wildest dreams, you mm -hmm. know, and they were comfortable bringing Brassois in as the backup, they didn't expect that the numbers were. Yeah, going if to you're New Jersey, good. you're 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 going to bring him in next year, because that's why they are where they are. Is their goaltending has been terrible. That's why they traded for for Jake Allen. They they looked to upgrade their 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 their, 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 Didn't their they job. They traded for Capo Kakinen too. I think they, they did. Yeah. 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 yeah, no, they did as well. And um, because the Devils would be a team at least in the top three in the Metro if they had goaltending. Because every other metric, they're they're up there. Um, but it's the, the goaltending. You know, and uh, they they chose Timo Meyer. We don't know how close that trade was, or what was really going on with with the Devils and the Jets. Uh, it, you know, maybe we'll never find out. You know, I I hope maybe one day we will. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but because of their what they paid for Timo Meyer, you almost had to go. Well, you know, we we did all this. We 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 have to bring. We have to sign him at least. They should have let him go, and they should have upgraded at. They should have upgraded at um, at goal at, at goal because look, it was a much bigger mistake to sign him long term. We'll see. Maybe he'll have a great year next year, but it's not working out so far. It's certainly not. Uh, and Laura, uh, Cam Poitras, our guest here on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show Saturday morning. Cam, I mean, the, the, you know, the obviously great performance last night against the Ducks. Yeah. Great performance on Wednesday against the Capitals. Pardon me, on Monday against the Capitals. Great performance on Friday against the, the Seattle Kraken. Unfortunately, in between there are all those poor performances. The ones against Vancouver, the egg last Saturday, the yeah. egg on Wednesday against the Predators. How concerned are you or would you be about that narrative, which is an accurate narrative as of late over the last, mm -hmm. say, 20 games or whatever the number is, the Jets struggles against playoff teams since Christmas? Well, they better beat Columbus. They better not lay an egg uh, tomorrow. Uh, and then we'll see what happens against the Rangers. They got to figure it out. I would be more concerned if they didn't tune up Seattle, tune up the Capitals, and then tune up uh, Anaheim last night. I mean, that's where I would be concerned about it. If if they were, uh, if they were, you know, taking those games into overtime, or you know, you know, uh, Hellebach or or Brassois was the difference between winning and losing those games, or they really lost, I would be concerned right now. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is is every second game or every you know whatever it is, they're 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 finding their game back, they're fixing it. That means that the guys are working towards uh, being a better team. I think they're making adjustments, more adjustments than maybe we know. Uh, in getting ready for the postseason. And I think that started in February with the coaching staff, getting the guys a little bit more dialed in, uh, more into the details and, and sort of tightening things up. So I, 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 they're responding to coaching. They're responding to the players in the room, fixing the problems. They just have to, they have to just get it consistent. That's it. Like it, it's, it's a big road trip coming up here. Uh, the game against the Rangers, that's an important, important game. I mean, it's the next measuring stick game that we've seen. And they've fallen flat over the last couple of them. So we'll see what happens against the Rangers. I believe in them. They're going to have a great effort here. 
Um, but uh, we're, this is just that little we're going through the you know the the chicane or whatever it is in yeah. F one, and uh, that's just what's happening right now. But they're they're going to figure it out. So Cam, tonight the University of Minnesota, which I believe is ranked number three, plays the number four ranked University of Michigan hockey team, featuring none or none other than first round draft pick Jets first round draft pick Rutger McGroarty. It's only a matter of time. You know, before the Jets sign Rutger McGroarty, mm-hmm. we've asked Kenny Weeb about this. We've asked Murad Atesh about this. We've asked Teddy Wyman about this. Do you think, let's put it this way, do you think Gabe, if Gabe Velarde is out longer than five games, does that change anything for you in terms of, you know, could Rutger McGroarty play more games? I think I'm with Murat, who was on last week. I'm sure you guys have spoken with him at some point, you know, yeah. in, in the not so distant uh, past about this. Like, what do you see happening here? Is he going to play a game and then he's just going to be around the team? That's kind of what Marat was leaning towards. And does, as I mentioned, does Velarde's injury change anything for you? Or is McGordy still just going to be around the team and, and not playing in the playoffs? Yeah, the I, I yeah, I think it'll be just a game or two. We'll see what happens with the Big Ten and the Big Ten championships and, and then going into the Frozen Four. Uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, Michigan's got a good chance of winning the whole entire thing. So we're yep. going to wait. And, we're, I think we're going to wait and see how that uh, plays plays out. I think Rutger is the kind of guy and the kind of player that if he finds himself uh, in a fourth or third line role, I think he could be an effective player for the Winnipeg Jets. I think he's that kind of guy and he's such a good uh, he's got such a great personality. Like he, he's a really good dude. I, I've been able to talk to him two or three times now and he he's he's rock solid and i think he he would come in with the right mindset and the right focus that he could step into that role in the final five games and perhaps into the playoffs is that the best thing for him is it better for him just to play and is the more likely scenario that he's just going to play a game sign with the jets uh at the at the end of uh at the end of the season uh in the ncaa probably yeah i mean it's probably more likely for him to be a, a game or two um, and then just be around the team for the playoff push. I think that's the more likely scenario, but I don't think Rucker McGordy is the kind of guy that you couldn't put into the, a fourth or third line role and him come in and, and make an impact on the team. I, I, I think he's that, I think he's that dynamic. Um, and I, and I think he brings that sort of, uh, the je ne sais quoi or whatever, um, uh, to the team. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hundred percent rule it out. And I also wouldn't rule out him perhaps deciding if, to stay one more year with the Wolverines. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Maybe I, I, captain, right? Yeah. I, I honestly, like he, he might stick around. I, I don't think, cause I, when I spoke to him, he said, what's the rush. And I said, so you can look to play with the moose this year. Uh, you know, why aren't you looking to sign yet? He goes, what's the rush there's, and there is no concern in my mind that he is not going to sign with the Winnipeg Jets at some point, but it might be a Dylan Sandberg situation where he decides, Hey, I'm going to stick in, I'm going to stay in Duluth and try to chase another championship. I wouldn't be surprised if Rutger does that. And I wouldn't be surprised as well um, uh, that, you know, he signs at the end of the season. So we're going to have to, we'll have to wait and see what happens with Rutger. And, and, and I think it's important to, uh, yeah, sorry, Cam, I was just going to say, I think yeah. it's important to remember he doesn't turn 20. I just checked until March 30th. Yeah. So like he's 19, almost 20 years old. Like let's not forget how young that is. I, I don't I'm with you uh, Cam I think like people think it's a foregone conclusion like it's it's 100% that he's signing which yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised but I'm with you I wouldn't be shocked I mean we've yeah. seen other players spend three years four years in college and we know that he has a bright pro career ahead of him mm-hmm. so it'll be really interesting to see if he signs when Michigan season's over and you know if the Jets just put him in for a game or possibly due to injuries because let's be honest guys you know putting the Gabe Velarde thing aside, there's going to be other injuries. Like it just happens yeah. both on forward and defense. Right. So like things can change. And I think you're right, Cam, if he plays on a third or fourth line role, I think he could be effective just because of look at what he did in the world juniors after suffering that crippling injury. Right. So he had a tube uh, sticking out a, of his stomach. Yeah. He's a special player for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think, I think Rutger McGordy is going to look as soon as the season's over with Michigan I think he's going to look at all of his options and he's going to make the best decision uh, for himself. And I think the Winnipeg Jets are going to support him 100%. You know, Cam, I have to ask you because you mentioned it and I, it may, got me thinking. The only player on this Jets team that is waiver exempt is Cole Perfetti. And you mm-hmm. said Cole Perfetti right now is, uh, you know, he's up in the press box. He's not getting into games. Do you think there's a benefit to Cole Perfetti being sent down to the Moose and playing some big minutes with Manitoba? On their stretch run, they've won seven of their last eight games and, you know, put themselves into a good spot for that fifth and final place. Do you think yeah, there's any chance awesome. that they 
Do you, but do you think there's any chance that they say, listen, Cole, get down, go down there, be a top line guy, get your game back to the level we need it to be at. And it's, there's not without precedent, right? Guys like Kyle Connor played, a, I mean, it's a little different, but Kyle yeah, yeah. Connor, remember, played that season with the Jets. It wasn't doing anything. They sent him down to the Moose. He didn't get it going right away, but then he eventually tore it up. He went, started with the Moose the next year for five games and then went back up to the NHL, never looked back. But do you think there's a benefit to Cole Perfetti saying, we don't see you in our top six. You're not a bottom six guy. So we're going to get you some minutes. We're going to get you some playing time. You know, because this mentality of you have to be an NHLer. Well, he doesn't. He's waiver exempt. You have the luxury of being able to send him down to get him that sort of, you know, get him to feel good about his game again. If there wasn't a chance for him over the next 10 games or 16 games to find himself again, I think it would be, I mean, and, and I, and, um, uh, uh, Weber had a great article in the free press when he spoke to on the last road trip, when he was speaking to Cole Perfetti and how much being a healthy scratch has affected him and how, how bad it made him feel. Mm -hmm. Um, and that would be just made so much worse if he dropped to the Manitoba Moose. It's like if your boss comes to you and says, uh, "Hey, uh, you know, I'm, 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 yeah, you, you know, you're just not performing well, uh, you know, during the day shift. We're gonna bump you down to the to the night, the overnight shift for the next, uh, you know, three, four months, and we'll just leave you there for the for the time being." Now, I I think it wouldn't be framed that way. Uh, but I, I just think it would be too much of a blow to his confidence. I, I think Great. him sitting in the press box is is better um, than than sending him to the Moose for his mental game. I think if he would go to the Moose, it would be like Axel Janssen, Fialbi, like times two. I think he would go there and absolutely dominate 100%. But I, I, I worry about the long-term mental... Uh, mental game for for Cole Perfetti. Cole Perfetti, I think. Do I think he's gonna over the next sixteen games score, you know, six seven goals? No, I think we'd be lucky if he scored one or two here over the last little bit. I think that if he scores a couple, he's gonna start feeling a lot better um, uh, because he's just he's digging himself a hole here uh, and he's just not performing. And he's 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 just worried about too much. I think it's the best place for him right now is 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 as a healthy scratch. But I, I just think sending him to the moose, I, I just think ah, I think it's too big of a blow. Um but Cam, then he could talk to me one on one all the time. It'd be fantastic. Yeah, well, he would love that. I mean, yeah, I mean, no, Dave, he would love that. Yeah. Poor kid is <laughs> yeah. getting punished enough. And Chevy already. and Zinger are factoring that in. That's the Manuk factor. Yeah. They are yeah, yeah. they are talking about that behind now, closed doors. Now, they might loan him to a team in Europe rather than send him to the <laughs> NHL in that case. Now Marco Rossi is doing great with the Wild. He he was a he was awesome when when the mm -hmm. when the Wild played the Jets, and he got sent down halfway through last year yep. with the Wild with 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 in sent down to Des Moines. So uh, Cole Perfetti needs a reset. I think it's going to, he's going to need the summer to recharge, get himself where he needs to go. He's too good of a kid. He's too smart of a kid to not figure this out. He's going to be a great jet for a long time. And I a hundred percent believe that, but I think he's going to need a summer reset. That's, that's just the, the way I, that's, that's my perception and what I think is going to happen. And Cam, I just wanted to mention this story. You mentioned Marco Rossi. Marco yeah. Dano is also a point per game in the Czech League. <laughs> well, bring him back. Bring him back. He's, he's an analytics darling. Let's bring back Marco Dano. Cam Poitras, Jets at Noon on CJOB. A fantastic appearance on the program as always, buddy. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Appreciate your time and insight. And we'll be sure to tune in to you and Jimmy every Monday through Friday at 12 noon sharp on CJOB 680. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. I'm late for Shul. You take care, okay? Bye. <laughs> you get going there, Ben. Cheers. Cam. Okay, bye. Care, buddy. See you later. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye-bye. Keeping Winnipeg laughing for over 30 years. Rumors, Canada's longest running comedy club, bringing you the biggest laughs from the best comedians on the planet Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, John Stewart, Dennis Miller, Brad Garrett, the greats, and all the up and comers, too. When was the last time you laughed out loud? Make it a great night out with friends or book your office or birthday party, even a fundraising event at Rumors. Get all the details and dates on upcoming shows at rumorscomedyclub.com. Whoa, Ezzy, everything okay? You look stressed. Of course I'm stressed. We're moving, the house is upside down, the kids failed miserably at packing the fine china, and my life is in chaos. Chaos! Yes, that does sound like a problem. What am I going to do? 
Ezzy, relax. Rolly's transfer moving and storage is the answer. With 60 years of experience in moving Manitobans and a track record of exemplary customer service, one call to Rollies and your stress is gone. No job is too big or too small. Just visit Rollies.com and they will take it from there. Thanks, Dave. And thank you, Rollies Transfer Moving and Storage, online at Rollies.com. Hey, Drew. Ezzy, whoa, what a smile. Yeah, I got my crowns done at Linden Market Dental Center and they whiten my teeth. I see. They're so bright that every time I smile, they go... We have hockey tonight. Do you have a mouth guard to protect those pearly whites? I sure do. Whoa, they even ting through the mouth guard. Linden Market Dental Center covers all your dental needs, from restorative to cosmetic dentistry, and will fit you with a sports guard for that active lifestyle. 877 Waverly. See LindenMarketDental.com. Boston Pizza harnessed Fanalytics to test if the game is better at home or at Boston Pizza. The results are irrefutable. Catch the game at Boston Pizza. Powered by Fanalytics. We did it again. You're on fire, man. There's power in a handshake. After a great game or great deal, it shows professionalism and respect. Two qualities Zapia Group Realty take pride in. You don't build a business where 95% of your clients are referred by others without honesty, integrity, and total dedication to client satisfaction. To sell your home for more in less time, shake hands with Frank and Mauro Zappia of Zappia Group Realty. Get started at zappiagroup.com. Great time spent with Cam Poitras in the last uh, 30 or so minutes of this morning's edition of the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. Drew Mandel, Dave Manuk, Ezra Ginsberg with you. Hour number two underway. Yes, Dave's giving me the finger point. Well, I'm just, I was asked to give a little promo, so I'm going to give a shout out. The Eastman Flames 50 50 Cash Raffle fundraiser is ongoing for one more week. It's the under 16 AA Eastman Flames. So help out. The, the girls' uh, ringette team, I believe it is, for uh, their fundraising efforts. I've tweeted out a link, I think, yesterday. I'll tweet it out again today. But uh, they're raising money for uh, the travel and uh, and all and equipment and stuff like that. So if you can help out the folks out in eastern Manitoba, please do so by buying a ticket to the raffle. And if you do, you can win cash. So it's, uh, it's money going to a good cause and help out if you're able to. Yeah. Shout out to Lac Dubani Minor Hockey. Okay, let's shout out to them as well. Yes, cash is king uh, <laughs> here on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. Still to come on the program in the bottom of the hour, Aaron Portsline going to join us to talk about the Columbus Blue Jackets. The Blue Jackets, obviously a disappointing season. Going through some upheaval from the start of training camp onwards. Our good friend Aaron Portsline, uh, now with The Athletic, he's going to join us to talk about that a little bit later on in the program. Let me ask you guys this. We talked about it with uh, with Cam, and we asked him about it in the the numbers of Lauren Prassois are beyond anybody's wildest expectations. He had another shutout last night, two in a row, you know, almost 150 minutes of, or more, maybe more now of 150 minutes of, of shutout hockey. Who does Brassois think he is, Drew? Brian Boucher? Uh, he might, he's, he's, he's sniffing Boucher land. I think he's still got to go in about, what, another three games or so yeah. uh, to match what Boucher did all those years ago? That yeah. was an impressive uh, shutout. That was with the Coyotes, I believe. I, I believe you are correct. Yeah. And now Brian Boucher, now he's an analyst on, is it TNT or ESPN? One or the other, I think he's a he's an analyst. TNT, I think, yeah, yeah. He had an incredible shutout streak. Uh, bet you that's close to twenty years now ago. Now, has he? Maybe not twenty, but uh, eh, what, long time ago. I yeah, saw Brian Hayward ago. last night. Say that again. I said I saw Brian Hayward last night. Oh, he was in, he does in, he does the Ducks uh, color. Uh, color. So yeah. he was in the in the in people the, forget the he played for the Jets one point oh, Dave. I know. Do people forget that? I don't know. Well, I think he's better known for maybe Montreal Canadiens. Montreal, yeah, yeah, yeah fair enough. He was, I, he was I, the backup to Patrick Waugh. Yeah, that's true. He was. He didn't get a lot of games. Uh, they did, they just kept running Patrick out there all the time. But speaking of backups and speaking of number of games, so the Jets are obviously in a position where we know that they're going to be a playoff team. They're in a they're you know right now atop the Central Division. They have 16 games to go. I believe their last back to back though is next weekend uh, when they play. Uh, I think it's Washington and the Islanders Saturday Sunday. I think that's the final back to back that they have. 
How many more games do you guys see Lauren Persua getting? And how many do you think, you know, you know, over the final, you know, 15 or so games that the Jets have here, how many do you think Hellebuck gets? And how many do you think uh, Brassois gets as they go down the stretch drive here? It's a good question because obviously it's going to be different than what we saw last year, right? Because not only did you have a lesser backup, a less talented backup in David Riddick, even though you rightly point out, Drew, his numbers have been better this year with the LA Kings, right? Mm -hmm. But I think it's a different situation, right, guys? Even though the Jets are trying to accumulate as many points as they can to finish first, they're not just trying to get into the playoffs like last year. The Jets just squeaked in. I think we'd all agree last year that it was a very different team in a different situation. But I would have to think, Drew, that, you know, Brassois could get as many as five or or six starts in the last 16 games, right? Like, I, I think, you know, you could definitely make an argument that, you know, Hellebuck might start 12 or 13. But I think I, if I had to handicap it, I'd probably say 10 starts for Hellebuck, 10 or 11 starts for Hellebuck, um, and then maybe, yeah, no, I'd go, I, I'll go 10 and 6. 10 and 6, fair enough. Dave, yeah. I'll, I'll let you answer that the same question. Could you see them going back to Boursois tomorrow against the Blue Jackets again? No, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think they'll they'll go back to Hellebuck. They don't want him sitting too long, but I, I do think, and and this is especially down the stretch, you need Hellebuck to be fresh. Right. And I mentioned it on the show yesterday, jokingly in 2015, when he played 21 consecutive games for the Moose that uh, we know he likes to play and and get into a lot of hockey games. But the whole reason you brought in Lauren Brassois, the whole reason you need, I mean, obviously it was to solidify the back end that you didn't feel confident in last year. This team, regardless of who they're playing in front of, plays the same way. That is a huge difference than what we saw last year. When clearly when there was Riddich in the net, you didn't have that same feeling of, that this, or I should say this team didn't have the same feeling as of comfort playing in front of him that they did in front of uh, Connor Hellebuck. So I, I think that there's they really are fairly interchangeable from from in that respect. And so really the benefit, it's what we talked about. It's all well and good, but you, know, you want Hellebuck to be crisp. So when that shot, from 20 feet out is coming. He's 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 ready. And I just think that the benefit of Laurent Brassois is you I understand that you want to be first in the central. I get that. And I and I but I the thing is you don't put yourself in a worse position, Ezzy, by having Laurent Brassois in the net than if you have Connor Hellebuck right now. So if you're the Winnipeg Jets, you're not like, well, we want to win, so we'll run Connor Hellebuck more often. You don't need to. You could literally alternate these two guys for the rest. They're not going to. But I think it'd be much better. It b- would behoove the team to do, you know, two and then like two for Hellebuck than one for Brassois. Two for I Hellebuck. Be sh- I wouldn't be Brassois. shocked. Yeah, exactly, Dave. Like we know that Brassois most likely is going to play. Drew mentioned there's at the end of this road trip, there's a back to back Islanders at uh, in the afternoon and then Washington again at that Drew, time that Drew loves, 11 30 in the morning central time. So On we know Monday, that Br- right? Brassois is going to play at no, least the Sunday. The Sunday, Sunday game. So Dave Brassois is going to play at least one of these five games, right? But yeah. I think we would expect him to play two. So that means that Brassois is probably going to play against either the Island, pardon me, the Rangers or the Devils, right? Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be shocked if they go with Brassois against the Rangers. And it goes back to what Drew said, you know, talking about the numbers. Uh, I'd, be, I'd be shocked if they go if go Brassois against the Rangers. I think you give Connor Hellebuck, Madison Square Garden. I mean, I, I wouldn't be shocked if they went to him tomorrow against the Blue Jackets, but I think Hellebuck gets the Rangers. Well, but he's the, point is, the point is that he's, he's – what I'm trying to say is that he's most likely going to get two of five, whereas in this situation last year, he probably gets one of five. That's and I right. think if he does right. get two of five, that's going to show us how many games he's going to get for the rest of the season. Like you said, there's only 16 games left. So I think it's safe to say, guys, that if it's not you know 10 games for Hellebuck, six in, for Brassois, it's most likely uh, – going to be nine for Hellebuck and then you know or pardon me um 11 for Hellebuck and five for Brassois like Brassois is not going to play you know two or three games of the last 16 that's just not going to happen so I think you're looking at a much more equitable uh, distribution of the games here in the last 16 games because we always talk about it Hellebuck has played more in goal than any other goalie in the last what five or six years Dave so mm-hmm. I think you know you want Hellebuck to be rested and you don't just start resting in the last week of the season guys that- that's exactly right. And and as just to the looking at the schedule, I, I would be shocked if Brassois doesn't play at least two of the games. To me, it's the Devils make sense and the Capitals. I mean, the and the Capitals game makes sense for, for Laurent Brassois. Don't they? You give Hellebuck tomorrow, like Drew says, you give Hellebuck the premier game against the Rangers and you give him the Islanders game so he's not in the second game of a back-to-back. But the other two games are, are perfect games for Laurent Brassois. So like 
this team would, I think they'd make a mistake, to be honest with you, to overwork Connor Hellebuck. He doesn't need to play four of the next five. Mm-hmm. Get him into three. Get Lauren Brassois into two. You're keeping your goalies fresh. And I think that's going to, it's going to serve you much better than it would if you play Connor. Connor Hellebuck doesn't need to play four of the next five. Connor Hellebuck, he has all the stats he's going to need. He'll be able to gain, you know, what he needs in terms of his Vesna caliber. He might not win the heart. But who gives a shit? I mean, ultimately, you don't want to win the individual trophies. This is about winning a Stanley Cup. And the exactly. best thing for this team is to keep Connor Hellebuck fresh. So the reason why you brought in Laurent Brassois was to be able to have a confidence in your backup goaltender. You have that. He's shown you that he deserves it. So you give him two of these five games and you give him a, a bit more than you would have. Because, again, I think it'll it'll serve you so much better when that first round of the playoffs comes and Connor Hellebuck is fresh. Look, if Halibut gets 11 of the final 16, so, you know, almost, you know, two thirds, one third, close enough, mm-hmm. at least for, you know, yeah. uh, you know, with the math there, that means that will put him at less than 60 games for this season, which exactly. is an incredibly low number for a guy who the Jets had to rely on, you know, 68, 69, 70 games because they didn't have, you know, an alternative and they were scratching and clawing and they needed every last performance out of them. Um, So if you can keep them at, you know, if you can reduce that workload, which they've talked about really from the start of the season, even the off season, they talked about reducing Connor Hellbuck's workload. Then you're, you're really probably in a putting him into a position come playoff time that he's never been in before where he hasn't faced a gazillion shots in the regular season. And he might be feeling, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, with a greater level of, of freshness and greater and not as not as beaten down over the course of the way too long regular season. And then you're seeing a different Connor Hellebuck potentially or, uh, you know, come playoff time. Drew, I have to fact check you there. Connor Hellebuck, the most he's played is 67 games. You were putting him in Marty Broder. Sure, Grant fine, but you knew what I was saying there, right? You, know, you knew what I was saying. 78 games. Speaking of the Rady dinner, I'm pretty sure fewer played 78 games one year. For the Blues, like if you think about that, guys, that's absolutely absurd that he <laughs> that he played that many games. And I think Broder's highest was like seventy five or something like that, seventy six. Dave will have to fact check me on that one. Um, sixty four games was how many games Hellebuck played last year. So I mean, that's exactly what you said, Drew. Sixty four, sixty six, sixty seven. Sixty four of the most high pressure games exactly. imaginable because right. had the Jets lost one of those games towards the yeah. end of the year, or you know, think about the team that was playing in front of them, how porous they were, and how Connor Hellebuck was the was sole driving force of grabbing this team and getting them over that playoff line, as opposed to now where the Jets have been. You know, granted, it's gotten a little bit worse as the season has gone on, but you compare the workload and the actual shots against. And everything else there's no comparison that he should be in a in a better condition and should be more fresh than than he has been in previous playoff runs for the Winnipeg Jets yeah I would agree with that and you know I I think also you're not just thinking about you know uh, you know the last I mean we're obviously we're not thinking about that everything is with an eye to the future um, and I'm starting to now lean more towards Brassois playing tomorrow. And Drew got me thinking because Drew's been right. You, Drew usually gets the goalies right more uh, often than I, we do, Dave. But regardless, I think it's safe to say, guys, that what we're saying is that Brassois is most likely going to get two starts of these five games, especially with the back to back. Right. Like that's the key here. Maybe if there wasn't a back to back, Hellebuck plays four of the five games. But I really don't think so, Dave. No, I, I really think, you know, uh, Rick Bonus, Scott Arneal, Wade Flaherty, I, I really think they're aware of this more so than ever, because this team is built for a long playoff run. And -hmm. in years past, I think you can make an argument that maybe Connor Hellebuck tired out a little bit than playoffs. Nobody's ever going to admit that, guys. But I think when you play 64 to 67 games in the regular season, and then you play another, you know, 6 to 14 games in the playoffs, whatever, whatever it is, you know, going back to the bubble year where the Jets went to the second round, I guess that would have been eight games. But yeah, I think, you know, this is a, a great luxury that the Jets have right now. And, you know, Brassois has been phenomenal. And I think Cam Poitras is right. I think, you know, and again, we're looking too far ahead here, boys. But I, I think, you know, Brassois is going to have, I think, some teams that are going to be after him watching what he's done here in Winnipeg and saying that, you know, he would be an upgrade for us in goal, whether he's the top goalie or the backup. Well, you know, I, I I go back to what we were talking about with Marty Biron a few weeks ago, where he talked about, you know, he got to the point of his career where, you know, he was satisfied being, you know, the backup goaltender to Henrik Lundqvist. You know, and I don't know that Laurent Brassois is satisfied to be the backup goaltender for Connor Hellebuck, you know, for the next number of years of his career. But, you know, there's pretty, you know, if the Jets could get to a number, and I don't know that they can, that's the problem, is that I don't know that they can get to a number that he'd be comfortable at to say, you know, you're going to be, you know, attached to Connor Hellebuck 
Bobak's hip for the next few years. But I think that certainly the Jets would love that to be the case because, you know, as great and as sort of uh, as great of a rookie professional season as Thomas Milich has had, Dave, and you can speak about that way more than I can. I mean, any, you're, the Jets are going to be in the market for a backup goaltender next year if it's not uh, Laurent Brassois, if he goes to find uh, greener pastures uh, in, in a different market. Well, don't let T. Conapoli hear you say that because he's he's already he's already amped for for Thomas Millich, the 2023 fifth rounder to be the backup. But I mean, let's be realistic. I don't. I, I look. Thomas Millich is having a fantastic season. Just picked up his first AHL shutout. Um, but I think he'll he'll be the number one guy next year with the Moose, and that's not a bad thing. That's where you want him to be. He may get a call up uh, or two, but I think that yeah, I think you're right, Drew. I think the problem for the Jets is that you don't have that next one to step into that backup role. And so, you know, the Jets realistically could have had that with Eric Comrie and, and Connor Hellebuck, because we know Comrie and Hellebuck are so closely connected. And we, you know, Comrie was more than able when he was needed in the, in that backup role here in Winnipeg, but you don't necessarily have that on the farm. And right. so, you know, would ideally you get Laurent Brassois for one more year? Sure, but I mean, I, I just think we have to be realistic. You, you got Lauren Brassois. He gave you a phenomenal year. He's going to get a nice pay bump, Dave. That's for he's sure. Gonna get a, he's going to get a big pay bump. And look, you know, if this team is, is a, if they win the Stanley Cup or if they're Stanley Cup contenders, but Lauren Brassois already won a Stanley Cup, right? And he won, and he was, you know, he played eight games for Vegas in, in, in the, uh, on their path to 16 wins mm -hmm. last year. But I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, he wants to be a starter. He wants to win that as a starter, not as a, not as a backup. So you, you enjoy what Lauren Brassois has brought, but I, I think it's a, uh, I don't think it's likely that you're going to see him in a Jets uniform next season. I would tend to agree with you, but it's interesting food for thought. Here's a name. I'll throw it out. And of course we'll talk about it way more in the off season, Eric Comrie. If the Jets keep going back to backup goaltenders that they know <laughs> Comrie's in you, he's had a terrible year in Buffalo, but he, yeah. so he won't cost you a lot, but there's mm -hmm. a, another backup goaltender that I'll be very familiar with. Uh, the question we talked with Cam Poitras about, Cole Perfetti and where he's best suited. I thought that was an interesting uh, conversation that we had about uh, 20 you. or so minutes ago, 30 minutes ago. Uh, you know, I, I, I just don't foresee him going to the Moose to play that role at this point in time. I think, you know, he spoke about... Uh, when he spoke with Kenny Weeb and he spoke about sort of the struggles that he's going through, I just think that would be too big of a blow for him right now to go back down to the Manitoba Moose. And what to be honest... I don't know if it would. Okay, well, hang on. Let me finish my thoughts, and then you get in there. And with the exception of Wednesday, that goal, the I think it was the Predators' second goal, where you know there was a lot of bad play by a number of the Jets on, uh, that were on the ice at that point in time, I thought you'd sort of seen some signs on uh, you know against Washington that he was getting out of it, that maybe he was getting generating a little bit more on the offensive side of things. But as you don't think it would be a, a detrimental to him to go down to the Moose. Well, I mean, what what is detrimental? I mean, is de is detrimental not playing at all? Like Cole Perfetti has to play hockey right now. Like I, he can't just be practicing. You know, twenty two years old, first round draft pick. We know that his future is the sky's the limit for this guy, right? Like you have to remind yourself again, guys. He's twenty two years old. So when people start talking about you know Perfetti struggling, you know he's a bust and everything like that. Well, he was playing pretty well the first thirty to forty games of the season, right? Like. I think the argument against sending him to the moose, Dave, like I don't think you're you're not sending him to the moose because you're you're worried about bruising his ego, right? Like I think at the end of the day, he has to play games, like I said. And if he goes mm -hmm. with the moose, you know he's gonna play in a top six or first line role, right? And he's gonna yep. contribute. And we already know that his confidence is suffering. So I don't think you're gonna shatter his confidence by sending him down to the moose. Now, again, Drew, I have no idea if the Jets brass is even considering this right now. But the reality is the Jets only have one injured forward mm -hmm. being Gabe Velarde and Perfetti's not in the lineup right now. So could we see Perfetti back in the lineup, you know, as early as tomorrow versus Columbus or, you know, on Tuesday versus the Rangers? Sure. Or at some point in this road trip. But all I'm saying is like, I don't necessarily know if you want Perfetti being a regular scratch the last 16 games of the season. I, I just don't know. And again, Maybe it's a situation, Drew, where you send him down for, to the moose for two weeks or three weeks, then you call him up right before the playoffs. I have no idea, and I, can, I and I didn't, by the way, Drew, think even as recent as a month ago that we would even be considering Perfetti a, a, as a member of the moose this season, Dave, because he was a staple of the second line for so long, right, mm -hmm. on the wing. I just think that it's something I think that, you know, 
I, I don't think is the worst idea. And again, I have no idea. None of us have a crystal ball. Dave M is the Moose insider, and I don't think he, you, Dave, you could even say with certainty whether or not you know the Jets would send Perfetti down to the Moose, but he is waivers exempt. So I yeah. think it's just something to consider that you know if he did go down and play with the Moose, who are playing much better than they were earlier in the season. At one point, the Moose were second last in the league, and now yeah. as Dave has chronicled, now they're you know pretty comfortably in a playoff spot. Maybe comfortable is not the right word, but they're in a playoff <laughs> spot, Dave. So, I mean, let's let's see what happens. But I, I just don't know if, you know, Perfetti being in the press box for two or three weeks is 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 a great thing either for him. I mean, let's let's just go through the list, okay, on, on this Jets team of guys they've drafted and sent to the Moose. It's a long one, right? Like, the only guy who, who hasn't been sent to the Moose was Mark Shifley. And, I mean, he played for the Ice Caps after his Patrick, season. Patrick Lyon, A2. Sure, but I'm just saying, like, all of these guys have, have had to spend some time with the Moose. Now, Cole Perfetti spent time with the Moose. He got a little bit of extra time, obviously, during COVID because, you know, he became eligible to play in the AHL, even though he was technically ineligible during that bubble year. But I, I look, I'm just of the opinion that I, I, the idea that it's insulting to be playing hockey, like you talk to hockey players, like I've talked to guys, Do they, are they happy to play in the AHL? No, nobody wants to play in the AHL. But uh, honestly, every single guy I talk to who's in the minors says, I'm a hockey player. I want to play minutes. I want to play hockey games. Sitting and watching hockey games is no fun. Practicing is no fun. So yeah, obviously, you know, every single guy wants to play in the NHL. And 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 I've said this, you know, when I'm talking to Vili Hainola or Dominic Tonnato, any of these guys, like you don't have to apologize for wanting to be in the NHL. Like you can't have a bad attitude when you're in the AHL. You have to have the, you know, do what's best for the team. But But ultimately, you know, your goal to be back in the NHL is a good one. And we're seeing it, right? Axel Janssen Fielbe is is performing. Didn't really initially, but now he's putting up numbers. I, I just look at the moose and the way they're going right now. I just think it could be such a confidence booster if you put, you know, for speaking of Tonato, he's playing on the line with CJ Cease and, and Nikita Chibrikov. If you put Tonato on the left side and you put Perfetti up the middle. And that, that bump Cease down to a third line role, right? Fourth line, because the third line is their, line. Yeah, is their identity of like Jeffrey VL, Parker Ford, and, and Christian Reichel. So I just think from a from a confidence perspective. With all the goals Freddie, Christian Reichel scoring, he's still on the fourth line? Wow. Third line, third line. Third line. He's there, still. he's, you know, yeah. Well, and Reichel's, it's, and it's, Reichel's been great for the Moose this year. He's been unbelievable. But then, and you look at their fourth line, right, with like Nicholas Jones, Henry Nickenen, and Daniel Torgerson. I mean, there's even, and it's funny, Nickenen's a funny story, 2019 fourth rounder more of a Miku Koivu style, like a defensive forward, but they're defensive to a point. He went through the first 35 games, didn't have a point, And now he's got seven in his last six. So he's definitely torn the monkey off his back boys. But I'm just saying like, to me, the idea that it's insulting, Adam Lowry got sent down. Brandon Tanev got sent down. Andrew Kopp got sent down. Like all of these guys, Jack Roswick got sent down. Kyle Connor got sent down. Guys get sent down. They, they, they work on their game. I mean, I, I saw the comment in the chat. I think it was vicious. Who said, what's the point of having the moose? Like this idea that like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to pull my best on cherry, but oh no, we're going to be insulted because you know, you're going down to play in the AHL. You're obviously sitting, you're obviously not good enough to be in an NHL lineup right now. So here's an idea. Practice is great. Play some games, get some confidence and then get called back up. You know, look, you, you both make reasonable points and, and, and I, and I can't dispute anything that either of you have said, which but Drew's you know, about to say that he's right. I'm not about to say that I'm right. I just don't foresee just it happening kidding. is what I'm saying. I don't think that the jets are going to make that decision. Cause I do think that there's still a role for Cole Perfetti to play on this team this year, moving forward. And I don't necessarily, you know, uh, right now, I mean, obviously Gabe Velarde's out of the lineup. I do think that if the fourth line, let's say, you know, tomorrow or, you know, whenever, you know, the fourth line of, you know, Vlad Nemesnikov moving back up the middle with Morgan Barron and and, and uh, Cole Perfetti, I think that fourth line and Perfetti can thrive in that situation. I do think that there's still an opportunity because I think the Jets still want to get offense from the bottom of the lineup. And I think that playing against softer minutes, against softer opponents, that there's potential there for Cole Perfetti to, to thrive in that situation. So I don't think that he's earmarked for the press box, you know, necessarily for the next 16 games, uh, the rest no, of the regular no, season. No, he's absolutely not. But that, that was my point. If he is going to be, if that's, if it's between a regular healthy scratch and the moose. That's what I'm saying. I picked the moose, but I'm with you, mm -hmm. Drew. I think, I don't think that, that Rick bonus and Scott Arneal and the coaching staff have given up on Cole Perfetti. Like, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes back in the lineup tomorrow versus Columbus. 
Like yeah. I wouldn't be right. I so wouldn't be either. I mean, it's just, it's, it's food for thought because of the fact that he was a healthy scratch and that's not something that we really saw coming a month ago. And so it's just, you know, something worth talking about because look, I mean, Gabe Velarde's health is obviously, you know, um, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. It's, it's a negative development in the jet season and he could be back for the regular season, or maybe he comes back in the playoffs. Um, but there's no doubt that, you know, Cole Perfetti right now, I mean, I think his ceiling on this Jets team, especially with the acquisition of Tyler Toffoli, is his ceiling right now is to be a fourth line guy. Like, I don't think he's going to be uh, like, you know, maybe if there's some injuries, he gets back into the top six. But I think right now you're going to see one of Alex Iafalo, Vlad Nemestikov or Nino Niederreiter play on the right side in the top six. Perfetti, Baron, Nemesnikov together, uh, 59, just over 36 minutes of five on five. They've got a cor Corsi four just under 60% and expected goals at 53%. Perfetti and Nemesnikov together, and they've played almost 300. They've played Good almost duo. 390 yep. minutes together. They have, uh, again, a Corsi four of 56% and an expected goals percentage of 57%. So they've had success. Perfetti with Nemesnikov has been a successful duo yep. for the Winnipeg Jets and I think that is factoring into maybe some of the decision making the Jets are going to have over the final 16 game stretch maybe you put Ehlers on the fourth line guys and reunite that line <laughs> <laughs> when we come back Aaron Port's line of the athletic joins us to talk about the Blue Jackets the Jets opponent tomorrow evening Saturday morning Drew Mandel Dave Manuk Ezra Ginsburg with you the illegal curve hockey show rolls on keeping Winnipeg laughing for over 30 years Rumors, Canada's longest-running comedy club, bringing you the biggest laughs from the best comedians on the planet. Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, Jon Stewart, Dennis Miller, Brad Garrett, the greats, and all the up-and-comers, too. When was the last time you laughed out loud? Make it a great night out with friends or book your office or birthday party, even a fundraising event at Rumors. Get all the details and dates on upcoming shows at RumorsComedyClub.com. Whoa, Ezzy, everything okay? You look stressed. Of course I'm stressed. We're moving, the house is upside down, the kids failed miserably at packing the fine china, and my life is in chaos. Chaos! Yes, that does sound like a problem. What am I going to do? Ezzy, relax. Rolly's transfer moving and storage is the answer. With 60 years of experience in moving Manitobans and a track record of exemplary customer service, one call to Rolly's and your stress is gone. No job is too big or too small. Just visit rollies.com and they will take it from there. Thanks, Dave. And thank you, Rollies Transfer Moving and Storage, online at rollies.com. Hey, Drew. Ezzy, whoa, what a smile. Yeah, I got my crowns done at Linden Market Dental Center and they whiten my teeth. I see. They're so bright that every time I smile, they go, We have hockey tonight. Do you have a mouth guard to protect those pearly whites? I sure do. Whoa, they even ting through the mouth guard. Linden Market Dental Center covers all your dental needs from restorative to cosmetic dentistry and will fit you with a sports guard for that active lifestyle. 877 Waverly. See LindenMarketDental.com. Boston Pizza harnessed analytics to test if the game is better at home or at Boston Pizza. The results are irrefutable. Catch the game at Boston Pizza. Powered by Fanalytics. We did it again. You're on fire, man. There's power in a handshake. After a great game or great deal, it shows professionalism and respect. Two quality Zapia Group Realty take pride in. You don't build a business where 95% of your clients are referred by others without honesty, integrity, and total dedication to client satisfaction. To sell your home for more in less time, shake hands with Frank and Mauro Zappia of Zappia Group Realty. Get started at zappiagroup.com. Commercial free from here to the top of the hour. Welcome back to the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. Drew Mandel, Dave Manuk, Ezra Ginsburg. Is that a new hat, Dave? Did you just change it is. Hat? I did. Okay. What is, is Breaking that, this one in. Hat, and it's not a Make America Great hat, right? It's a Make I See hat. Make I See Great Again hat. No, 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 no. You know Look, what? Make I See Great Again. 
Yeah, you know, okay, well, it's a beautiful hat there. Maybe take it Thank off you. or something along those lines. Uh, Aaron <laughs> Port's line of the, of the uh, not the Columbus Dispatch, it's his former home of the Athletic is no. set to join us coming up right now. Talk about the Jets' opponent tomorrow evening in Ohio. <laughs> there he is, Aaron. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us from Nationwide Arena. Beautiful banner backdrop. You got yeah, there. trying to get an angle for you here, boys. Forgive me. Yeah, okay. and Dave was joking, obviously, Aaron. That's not a MAGA hat. It's an illegal curve hat. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, don't make me hang up. <laughs> don't worry, we won't. You know, it's unfortunate. I bought a great hat years How's ago for, at a, how's that uh, for a shot. <laughs> hey, perfect. I got a I bought a beautiful uh old, that, that old okay? Houston. Yeah, that's okay. You got it now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'll tell you my hat story later. Aaron obviously brought you on talk about the blue jackets and the jets tomorrow sure. evening in uh Columbus. Uh, you know, from from day one of training camp, it's obviously been a uh, a bit of a disaster in, in Columbus this yeah. year. Um, you know, in your wildest dreams, did you ever envision it going this poorly, this quickly uh, this season? Well, not to correct you, but it it was a disaster four days before training camp. <laughs> Sorry, uh, when Babcock was dismissed. Right. I mean, who goes through that? What a way to head into training camp. You know what? Honestly, I, it has not, it has been disastery in terms of the results for sure, but it has not been a toxic landscape like last season was. And honestly, I can't say that it's a surprise that it's been like this this year. Um, said from b before the season started that it's going to be a bumpy road for a while. You've got a new coach, a new system. You have a new coach four days before training camp. You have a new assistant coach. Mark Recchi comes in during training camp. You've got all these young players, new players, first-year players. Um, you've got veteran players, Patrick Line, playing a new position. You've got two new defensemen in your top four, Provorov and Steverson. That's an adjustment. You don't know who's playing on the first pair opposite Wierenski, so you got to figure that out. I mean, they were just so Elvis Merzlikens, the goalie. What are you getting with that? There's really no point on the ice that you could look and say, that's where you hang your hat on this team in terms of having success. So it doesn't surprise me that there was a real rocky start to this. Um, I think with, you know, if, if you are patience is in short supply around here, but if you're able to look beyond just the results you see some really good things happening now they've got a new gm coming in so there's a there's some disruption there but it's been an incredibly educational season here uh the wins and losses i honestly didn't expect them to reflect incredible growth this year they are mildly better than they were last year that's kind of what i expected um but they've learned a lot and i think they they're starting to get some clarity and some really important parts uh, of the roster. Aaron, obviously, you know, we, we brought you on today to talk about the Blue Jackets because the Jets play them tomorrow. But another one of the reasons why we wanted to ask you to come on, and we appreciate you coming on, you were always a regular guest back in the TSN 1290 days. So we always appreciate that. But awesome. we wanted to ask you about Patrick Lyon because nobody is closer the, to the team than, than you are. And, you know, I wanted to ask, have you been in contact with him at all recently? Has the team mentioned anything about Patrick Liney? It's been over a month. It's been about six weeks since he entered the player assistance program. Have we received any uh, update at all about how Liney is doing? No, we have got no update and we're not going to get an update. That's kind of part of the the program is the, the player gets uh, to completely step away from hockey. We've certainly allowed him that space. I'm not going to bother him uh with this he, he's there are things he has to get in order uh that really have nothing to do with hockey that's what this process is and it's not entirely up to him when he comes back either he he tells the program that he thinks he's ready to come back but they have to uh, approve him to come back they, the people who work within that program the experts in the field so you know at this point i, I don't even want to say you know, likely not likely that he's back before the end of the season because that's just pure guesswork. But I don't think it would surprise anybody if we've seen the last of him this season. Um, and I, I try to stay away from the rumors and innuendo and people guessing what they think yeah. is the situation and, and how it's going to go. 
so I'll just leave it up to Patrick Line. The most important thing now is Patrick Line, the person, not Patrick Line, the hockey player that's on the back burner. Uh, and so the Blue Jackets will wait to see uh, where that goes. But another part of the disruption here, for sure. And, and obviously, just to follow up, Aaron, on, on, on Line A, obviously, with the connection of, not that you needed the connection with, with Winnipeg, because I think, you know, the hockey world, as you know, there's a, it's a big world, but it's also a small world in many senses. So everybody is hoping for the best for, for Line A. So I just wanted to mention that on behalf of all of us. We're hoping that, you know, Patrick's doing much better and we're going to see him, you know, in a Blue Jackets uniform, you know, very shortly. The other, the other question I wanted to ask you as a follow up is, you know, there was a lot of speculation. And again, we're not going to go into the speculation, but, is there any reason to think that Line A won't be back with the Blue Jackets? Because I think there's been a lot of rumors out there that you know the Blue Jackets might move him when he's ready to come back. Yeah, well, so separating this from his his uh, involvement in the players' assistance program, I think that's the question we can't possibly know the answer to. Right. Uh, so just thinking of it purely from a hockey perspective, it was a weird fit here. Uh, with Patrick and and at no point here I shouldn't say that there was like a six week period last season where he was pumping in goals at the rate you all got used to him doing in Winnipeg and especially early in his career other than that he's been uh, not necessarily an ineffective player but a different player not a feared uh, puck shooter which is his calling Um, so it's been kind of weird in that respect the other aspect of this is you know the the blue jackets were they thought they were rebuilding and then johnny gaudreau said you know hi uh, (laughs) what do you guys think and that just nothing against gaudreau how do you say no to that um but you bring him in he and line a they've tried him together of course they've tried him together one's a playmaker the other one's a shooter and it's just example number three thousand of how lines are not a science. It, it just hasn't worked. Uh, Gaudreau and Line A are oil and water on the same line. Now, that could be because Jenner has been in the middle of them, not a prototypical uh, center by any stretch, not a playmaker by any stretch. But he works with Gaudreau at times. But Line A and Gaudreau in the same line, even on the same power play, one of them's got to be moving from their preferred spot uh, on, on the left dot. And it's been both of them at times, no matter which one moves, it hasn't worked. So I don't think it's crazy to think that Line A would, if all things were were 100% and he were still playing, I don't think it's a, a completely foreign concept to think that he would have been moved at the trade deadline if they could have, or that he might be moved this summer. I don't think that's out of the realm. Um, but I think literally everything is on hold until they, they figure out where he is in terms of the health of his uh, his persona, his person, rather than the hockey player. Aaron, normally when uh, the Jets come to town, the other part of that trade was uh, Jack Rosovic, some forgotten part of that trade, the the Columbus-born, the, the favored son right. of yes. uh, folks. So, you know, he played there for for parts of four seasons, essentially three full seasons, if you kind of combine this year and the, the year he was traded. Yeah. What was the impact of Jack Rosovic? For, for that organization. We knew what he was able to do here in Winnipeg at the AHL level. He was an absolute dominant player, but, yeah. and, and how hard was it for them to trade a guy who, who meant so much for, as a Columbus born player for that organization? Yeah. Um, he was in many ways, the same player in Columbus that he was in Winnipeg, where there were nights where the, the skill is just absolutely uh, unavoidable. Can't miss him. He's all over the place. And then there were long stretches where you just wondered where he was. The one thing they did this year that I don't think he liked, but I think ultimately was a favor for him, was they moved him from center to the wing. And he is, I think, so. I think he was tradable this year uh, to the Rangers because you could see him on the wing. There's no, there's not as many defensive liabilities as there were. Teams looked at him like in previous trade deadlines and thought, how can we use this guy in a, in, a, in a stretch run to the playoffs, but more importantly, in the playoffs, where can you play him at center in the playoffs and have him not just get eaten alive? Um, you put him on the wing and you go, okay, look, he's not a liability defensively there, 
and anything he gives you offensively is gravy. And he can he can stretch a D, as you've seen. So I, he's, he scored the other night with, with the Rangers. He had one and one. Uh, he is a gifted offensive player. I think there, there have been issues with him fully maximizing his potential. And I think they thought maybe that he would grow out of that in Columbus. Didn't really happen. But he had some decent stretches here. Um, in terms of trading him because of his roots and him being a Columbus guy, that's certainly part of this. Um, but they have another Columbus guy in the room, Sean Corrali. Uh, there's no shortage of Columbus guys in the NHL. They have another guy up here, Carson Meyer, from the AHL team that is a, a Columbus guy. Um, you know, there's players around the league from Columbus. So it's not the novelty here that it was maybe 10 years ago. So I don't think they were like, I don't think that really him being in part of, of this, this uh, Columbus community, I'll say this, he's a beloved member of the local hockey community and Jack is great. I mean, great with kids, with the community. I hear all sorts of stories from behind the scenes of him doing charity work that is not done uh, for the purposes of being on camera with the team. He's done it because he wants to do it. Um, so he'll, he'll be missed for sure in that respect. Uh, but in terms of a player pending UFA, had got squeezed out of the top six with the players that they've got here and with the players coming. Um, so it made sense. Aaron Portsline of The Athletic is our guest on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show talking about the Columbus Blue Jackets, the Jets into Columbus to face the Blue Jackets tomorrow evening. Aaron, uh, head coach uh, Pascal Vincent, somebody we're very familiar with here in sure. Winnipeg. Uh, under trying circumstances, he gets his first uh, NHL head coaching position this year in Columbus. How would you evaluate the job that he's done behind the bench? Well, full full respect to him. I he, he As you said, it's a tough circumstance and and, you know, he, it also must be known or considered, too, that, you know, he's had to swallow a little bit of pride here. He was passed over for the job when Brad Larson got it, was mm -hmm. brought on as an associate coach. He was passed over for the job when Babcock got it. Um, I think there are a lot of people that would have a hard time sort of swallowing their pride in that situation um, and moving forward in that organization. Uh, he's done so without any outward expression of frustration or, you know, how do you like me now kind of attitude. I also will say that he's done it his way. He is a forthright, uh, strong-willed, smart hockey guy. And the, the one thing I've seen in the years covering this team is when you, when a young coach gets that chance, they have to do it their way. They cannot emulate the guy before. They cannot take on the persona. It has to be authentic. And I do think Pascal Vincent has held on to his authentic self. There's been some question marks about some stuff. There, every day when a team is losing like this one is, of course there are. Um, I just asked him a minute ago, why is Boone Jenner playing over 20 minutes a night? Player who's had two seasons end with back injuries. He's been way over 20. <laughs> he played 26 minutes the other night in a regulation wow. game. Wow. A loss for a team that is 22, <laughs> 33, and 11. What are you doing? Um, so there's been that kind of stuff. He has coached to win, not develop. That is something we've not seen in these types of seasons in Columbus. Uh, the, the tendency is to wheel out the young guys and put them in situations to expose them teach them, educate them, make them better for future years. Um, I suppose you could say that Pazzi's future here, like many others, is in doubt with a new GM coming. So he is he coaching to win as many games as possible and, and really throwing future. This is about survival and, and self-sustenance rather than uh, the 24-25 Blue Jackets. But I don't know that that's, that's fair because – He's really coached this way, uh, really even from the start of the campaign when he had as much leash as he's ever going to have here. Um, so respect to him. He's done it his way. I think it would be unfair to look at this situation and say that there has not been growth. There has been. Cole Sillinger looks like a 200-foot player. Mm -hmm. Like He's not scoring goals like he did as a rookie two years ago. He is a player now, uh, and you can see it. Igor Chinikov. 
I think, again, these are names. I'm guessing some people in Winnipeg are kind of going, who? <laughs> in is a really good year. Not and on our show. We know everything about every player. Uh, my, our audience knows everything about everybody. Aaron, but, uh, it would have been a little... It would have been a little easier a few years back when the when the Moose played the uh, Cleveland AHL farm yeah. team, but they don't play right. anymore, so we don't know them as right. well. Yeah, but I should know that Canadians know literally every player. <laughs> and literally probably know an uncle um, or live near, nearby someone in their family. Uh, Chinikov has exploded at times this year. He's still fairly inconsistent, but there are games where he is a difference maker. The Voronkov kid is second in the league to... I can't remember the dude's name in Chicago, but something Bedard for rookie <laughs> goals. No one knows about him because uh, he's the blue jacket. He's been under the radar. He's had a really good season. And there have been several players like that that you would be lying to yourself if you didn't say these are dramatically better players now than they were in October. And I think you got to give that coach and the coaching staff some credit for that. You know, Aaron, you, you just mentioned Cole Sillinger, who is in the lineup right now. So Jets fans are going to get to watch him play tomorrow against the Blue Jackets. Adam Fentilli uh, obviously had a very scary injury uh, with the lacerated calf. Uh, and I know that, you know, he's been out now for uh, something like six or seven weeks. Yeah. Is, is he expected to play at all in, at the end of the regular season? Or, you know, is, is, is it kind of too early to say right now? Well, so what they're saying is, at first they said for sure he's going to be back before the end of the season. Now the word hope has worked into the equation, and I think they're being smart about this. This this guy is the he's the franchise. He's the future number one center, maybe the present number one center. Um, so if there is any any risk to him playing even that last game, April sixteenth, they would be idiotic to wheel him out there. Of course, the kid wants to play. I think he's still on pace to return. Uh, later this month, probably at this point, early next month is the soonest you'd see him. To my knowledge, he's not skating yet. But the hope, and I use that word specifically, the hope is that he will play again this year. I just want to, you mentioned Johnny Goudreau and his waving at Columbus to come there. W what have you seen in him in his second year, full year with the, with the Blue Jackets? Yeah, well, there ain't no Elias Lindholm here. <laughs> uh, there, there is no Kachuk on the other wing here. And I think you see that reflected in his totals. He's, I got to look at this, but I think he's on pace for a career low goals wise. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. He yeah. was, Ten so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he was invisible the first six weeks of the season. And if you've ever seen Gaudreau play, I know you all have, he is noticeable. He has the puck, he's all over the ice, just an, a brutal start. Um, better since then, but we have not seen the high flying, um, cookie monster that he was in Calgary. Now, fairness, he makes plays with the puck and there are some guys here, some, he's, you know, he's making passes to plumbers, not artists here <laughs> at times. And so some of those great plays that he makes don't end up where they should. Um, but I, he's been okay. On the whole, he's been okay. Uh, I think, you know, have they found a fit with him? I mean, he, here's here's my thing. It's some If Fantilli does come back, I would like to see a run with Gaudreau with Fantilli. I'd like to see Jenner on the wing where he started his career, where he's really effective. Um, he's a hard guy to move out of the center though. He's got 20 goals again. He's, he is, I mean, he's a work, he's a workaholic. I get it. But at some point, I think they've got to see how they can get Gaudreau to spread those wings. Who works the best with him on the off wing? Is it Chinikov? Is it Voronkov? Is it Marchenko? There's, there's options here. But that's one thing you'd like to see before the end of the season is, is a sort of a, a new burst for Gaudreau. Last one for you, Aaron. Uh, they signed him to a contract to be the goaltender of the future, but that Ooh. future is very much in doubt. Yes. What happens with the goaltending position? Of course, Elvis Merzlikens is who I'm referencing. Yes. He has, of course, requested a trade uh, at their various points this season. Yeah, well, so let me just walk you through that. Because <laughs> this, this tells you where this has all gone this year. Um, 
they decided in November mm-hmm. that they were just going to look at Tarasov and consecutive starts. And this completely flies in the face of how they've handled literally every other spot on the roster, which was earn your ice time. So that threw up red flags, and it went like two weeks between Elvis starts, and you're like, what the hell's going on? Elvis says, um, you know, I'm not going to be the number three here. I've asked for a new scenario. Everybody assumed that meant a trade. Um, he says, I did not ask the team for a trade, but we both decided maybe we should search something out in that regard. And two days later, An he, open marriage. <laughs> yes, right, which always looks good on paper. <laughs> um, and then two days later, he says, you know, everybody in this room knows I asked for a trade. And so it was important for me to play well tonight. And you're like, whoa, whoa wait a minute. <laughs> so then he literally from that conversation with the media goes to the back room here. I'll show you the door if I can find. There's the door to the room. Goes through that door. Now we're going this way. There we go. Um, <laughs> and calls his agent and says, I think I screwed up. I just told the media that I asked for a trade. And so his agent, who Jerry Johansson, I've known him for years, very respected guy, uh, makes it known Elvis did not ask for a trade. So to this day, (laughs) there has been a trade request, a non-trade request, a trade request, and a non-trade request. Um, All the while, Elvis has been a much better goaltender than he was last year. No question about that. Um, Not good enough. There's still some nights where he... As I like to say, puts the leak in Merzlikens. <laughs> but they've got to do something. It's not even really about his on ice, honestly. Now, there is, he's going to be 30 years old next month. This is not a young man. Um, the expectations of a franchise goaltender extend beyond just how you play. Now, if he had a 928 save percentage, you can be who you are and be seen as quirky and a character. If your save percentage hovers around 900 and the year before was 876, that's a problem. That is a problem. I think they have reached a point where they know it's time to move on, but good luck trading a guy at 5.4 with three more years. Mm -hmm. My suspicion is that a buyout is coming this summer, especially when you look at how flooded the market is for goalies. Like there's just not going to be a reason Unless somebody's scouting staff absolutely loves Merzlikens and thinks that their room can bring him in and doesn't need him to be uh, one of the foundational pieces. He can just be the goalie. Uh, there's going to be so many options flooding the market this summer that I, it, it feels like it's heading toward a buyout or a trade where they eat a significant part of it coming back. Um, but So it's good news, bad news for the Blue Jackets. Tons of goalies out there. Uh, is the good news, and they, they can find a replacement probably. Uh, bad news is it's going to be hard. It's going to be a it's going to be a buyer's market uh, with so many guys out there. Aaron, hopefully yeah. Elvis isn't walking by you there at Nationwide Arena. and Didn't hear that, but <laughs> you know what? I've written it. Um, I'm not. I'm not at an age to hide from that shit anymore. It's just. <laughs> it just is. Like I would say it, and I have said it to his face. Nothing confrontational. It, it's the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron Portsline from The Athletic. He's going to have coverage of tomorrow evening's Jets and Blue Jackets game. Aaron, great to catch up with you again. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. We'll let you get on with the rest of your Saturday. Right. Thanks, guys. My right arm's killing me. <laughs> Cheers, Aaron. Bye, Aaron. Take care. There he goes, Aaron Portsline, joining us this morning. There yeah, is does he know the Blue Jackets or like, what? In oh, and crazy. out like nobody's business. Well, he's covered uh, them for what twenty since the whole time. Yeah. Since they, yeah. we, we had him on Love the show dispatch. when we were back on Kick FM. I mean, he, and he's such yeah. a good guy. We've well, got to meet him at the arena a bunch of times over the years. Like, there's nobody better than Portsline. One of the biggest mistakes that Scott Arneal ever made when he was head coach in Columbus is he immediately took a confrontational approach with uh, with the media in Columbus. And the media in Columbus, by the way, by and large, at that Port- time, certainly is Portsline. Aaron Portsline. <laughs> yeah. You know. So it just never made any sense, and I think that if yeah. you you know if you sat down with Scott again and you and you said what would you do differently? Not that you have to be buddy buddies or anything, but just it was such a he just su- took such an aggressive stance for uh, that was an error in probably in his approach. Uh, you know, he's good uh, now. 
yeah, he's doing okay right now. And obviously, you know, uh, Pascal Vincent, who we, the, you know, we know so well, he's been a guest on this show many times. Uh, Dave and Pascal go out for dinner on at least, you know, they speak weekly on the phone. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> I'm being tired. Pizzeria <laughs> Gusto, right, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> It's true. And, yeah, there you go. Anyways, great to catch up with Aaron Portsline ahead of tomorrow night's Jets Blue Jackets game. Uh, and of course, we will have complete post game coverage tomorrow uh, after that game. So game time is five o'clock central post game right around 730. So a bit of an earlier post game than we're typically used to, but it'll be fun. 730 tomorrow night, the Jets and the Blue Jackets uh, couldn't do battle. Lots of young talent on that team. And it's sort of a shame. Uh, as, he, as you referenced, I think, in one of your questions about how much of that talent's out of the lineup because yeah. I remember Cole Sillinger, when he played here for the Blue Jackets earlier this year, he was very noticeable. And then if you add a guy like Adam Fantilli into the lineup, well, you can see there's young talent there, just a matter of getting it all together and keeping it healthy for the Blue Jackets' perspective. Yeah, and Aaron mentioned, you know, Boone Jenner, 20 goals. And, yeah, everybody knows that Boone Jenner on a good team is not a first-line center. Nah, but nor should the he Blue be playing Jackets, 26 minutes a night. That's way no, too much. No, absolutely not. But He doesn't it, have the best name in hockey, though. Yeah, he's got a great hockey name, and he's a great captain. And, I mean, 20 goals is 20 goals, guys. 20 goals yeah. is not easy to do. Score in the NHL. I know Dave could do it, but I certainly could not. I don't <laughs> think Drew could. But, no, I mean, look, it's the Blue Jacket season is pretty much gone as bad as it could have gone, right? Like, they weren't big time sellers, but as you mentioned earlier, Drew Jack Roslovic, Andrew Peak traded at the trade deadline, yeah. and you know this team is well behind the last wild card spot. They've been out of it for a while, guys. Let's be honest, but they've got pride. Pascal, we know, is an excellent coach, and you know they're going to try to win this game tomorrow. But I mean, if the Jets play anything like they did last night, I mean, they should beat the the Blue Jackets just based on skill alone. Yes, you look at the bottom of the Blue Jackets raw. I mean, you look, you know, up and down the Blue Jackets roster, and the Jets have a better team. But you especially look at the bottom forward groups uh, of the Blue Jackets, and those are not uh, what you would describe as household names. And some of them are young guys with talent, you know, who are you know finding their way in the league. And other guys are just guys who are you know just really uh, space fillers for guys who yeah. are out of the lineup. With all due respect, and the Jets need to take advantage of that tomorrow, Dave. They absolutely do, and and you can take advantage of. I see merch. The I see merch store is open. I just include drop the link in the chat. So if you want to get your I see merch, remember the store is open for March and then we're closing it. And then the stuff will be produced in so April. Merch so. for March is what you're merch saying. Merch for March. Yeah. So the merch store go. is open. I haven't been doing a very good job of promoting it, but I'm just doing that now. You can get a new icy hat. You can get one of you these. Can get, you can get fancy. a nicer hat than the one Dave's wearing. In fact, <laughs> why? What's wrong with this hat? I like this hat. Uh, it just doesn't. It's not I doing like it. it for me. Make make icy great again. I like Anyways, it. I'm, yeah. I'm rocking the red icy shirt. Yeah, that's Dave's a nice shirt. The hat. shirt's fine. The the shirt is fine. Just Drew, that hat. take take your little leftist stuff and move out of the way. It's not like, a politics thing. I just don't <laughs> think that's the nicest hat that we've ever produced. All and right. Well, I, okay. Involved. I'll give you. I'll give you this. I like the black one better. Okay. Uh, I like the blue one as he's wearing, but yeah. I ordered this one. I haven't worn it for like a month. So I'm just stretching it out, getting yeah. it in the rotation. The black one's getting a little, uh, my bulbous head is knocking it out. So, uh, but if you want to get your merch, we're, uh, we got it in the, in the old link. So right. there you go. I'm hopefully like not my brother. Who's, I, 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 I see my brother putting the white hoodie, but that means he's just going to want me to order it and not pay for it. He won't pay for it. So sorry, Dan, Dan no chance. Dan is notoriously cheap. It's true. Uh, but uh, I think this from Matthew Thompson, merch madness. It is March. It's college basketball season. It's merch madness here there we go. on the illegal curve. Or I like show. to call it when Kentucky loses March sadness. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, quick answer. I don't have an update on T for T Cone Pauli on Tyrell Bauer. Uh, but I suspect he's not going to play tonight. They'll probably roll the exact same lineup. Maybe even with Thomas Millich, they're in action. I believe it's a 7 o'clock start. Huge game in Chicago. They win tonight. Uh, I'm not saying they're guaranteed a playoff spot, but it puts them in a very good stead. And Put on your antlers. It's time for the Manuk Moose Minute on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. Completely speaking of which, speaking of which, the um we do have moose seats to give away if you want to go to the moose game on if you want to play a little hooky from work tuesday join me at canada life there'll be eight thousand screaming kids in the crowd uh and myself all of them chanting so, dave 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 no you know what they chant dave, dave, no they dave, actually don't fight, do that fight, they, fight. they actually chant fight 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 because they're bloodthirsty it's the best i actually the funniest thing ever is watching kids at a moose game because all they do at the smallest like 
there's a collision and the kids just start their bloodthirsty animals. They start yelling fight, fight. All I can think about is Lisa Simpson right now going, hack the bone, hack the bone. <laughs> Ralph Wiggum <laughs> lost his shin guard. Hack the bone, hack the bone. Exactly. Right. So, so anyways, if you want to go to the Moose game on uh, Tuesday, we got yeah. tickets in the IC zone. So uh, hit me with an email, Dave at IllegalCurve.com or slide into my DMs, IC Dave, and we'll, uh, we'll set you up with uh, some tickets to the game. And, and, and part of the IC in- zone, sorry, I was going to say, Drew, part of the IC zone is, Dave, you come down from the press box and you interact, sign some autographs, <laughs> take some pictures, kiss some babies. That's what that's what's included when you go to the when you go to a moose game in the IC zone, right? We'll we'll even throw in some complimentary earplugs to handle the screeching children as well. Uh, big thanks to everybody for joining us this morning on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. Cam Poitras, Aaron Portsline, in case you missed either of those interviews, they're available on our YouTube channel. They're available on the podcast, which will be up shortly. Uh, remind everybody that again, we're going to be on tomorrow, seven thirty p.m. post game show following the. Jets and the Blue Jackets. Be sure to do so if you haven't already done so. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the podcast, and leave us feedback here, there, and everywhere. Big thanks to all of our sponsors. They make the post game show, the Saturday show, the website a possibility. Our friends at Rumors Restaurant and Comedy Club Grid Park use code Illegal Curve to get oh, for free. Hold on. Sorry. So hold on. Uno momento por favor. We do have, and this is not really applicable but it's i'm interrupting you at a grid park because i did hear from our friends at grid park last night we're going to be giving away free parking for the remainder of the jets um home dates so oh, wow you will have free parking for one i subscriber per home date courtesy of our friends at grid park and i promise you it won't be uh you know, Drew M- Mindelis, who wins, or, or, or Ezra <laughs> Skinberg. No, that's yeah. too obvious. Yes. Drew Ezra M. Ginsburg. So if, if some folks want to get free parking and try out the Grid Park app, we're going to be hooking you up with uh, tickets or free parking uh, for those games uh, for the remaining, what is it, eight home games left? So I think I think there's eight home games left. So parking those is eight home games. So that's huge. I mean, that yeah. is that is definitely going to be something that I think a lot of people are going to want to take advantage of. Exactly. Yes. So tune into tomorrow night's post game show, and we'll give you some more information on that, on how you get free parking to Winnipeg Jets games after the five game. You have to take Drew in the car, though. If you get, <laughs> yeah, if you're you gonna give me a ride, parking, actually. Yeah, Sorry. Drew has to ride shotgun with you. Exactly. I would put you're him in the trunk. Dave personally, up is what but. you're doing. Yeah, I forgot uh, to tell you. By the way, it comes with it. There's a little asterisk, and it says you also have to come pick me up and drive me to the game. And then in the second period, when I need to leave, you have to drive me home, to, yeah. and then you go home. I mean, but it's I'm only saying price to pay, Dave. The parking's free. I mean, who wouldn't want to ride with? Dave M to a Jets game. Hey, you used to every day. Big thanks to our friends at Grid Park for their continued support of the Illegal Curve Hockey Show and the Illegal Curve Post Game Show. Also, our friends at Linden Market Dental Center, Zapia Group Realty, Bethway, Tough Duck, Boston Pizza, Seagram's, and Rolly's Transfer and Farmery Beer. These fine companies, these great companies, they help support Illegal Curve Hockey. They make this show, they make the Saturday, the post game show, they make it all possible. So we appreciate them. Thanks everyone for joining us this Saturday morning. We'll see you again tomorrow, 7 30 p.m. for the post game show illegalcurve.com updated all day long the merch store is open for merch madness for dave manuk for ezra ginsburg i'm your host drew mandel if it's saturday it's the illegal curve hockey show live on youtube and all of our social media platforms